Good evening and welcome to the uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting of July 17th, 2019 at um, a little after 6 o'clock, 6.01 um, at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, uh, the main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, just uh, anybody that speaks tonight, uh, this, this meeting will be recorded. And um, so I call the meeting to order and our first um, item on the agenda is to approve minutes from previous meetings. We've got some from... January 9th, 2019, January 11th, January 14th, and then a more current one of June. So um, I'm going to make a motion for um, January 9th, January 11th, and January 14th uh, to approve them as presented in case um, Dave would w like to abstain. Okay. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and then I make a motion to approve June 19th. As presented. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Um, so, select board reports and, and announcements. I, um, you know, was gonna. You know, we haven't we haven't met since the end of June. You know, well, before the end of June. So middle of June. Middle of June. Um, we had vacations and Fourth of July, and I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Um, I guess since our last meeting, we had a debt exclusion vote on two items um, for the town to decide on. One was the school um, capital at Frontier, which, which uh, passed. And the other, which unfortunately didn't pass, was the uh, sewer, the debt exclusion on the sewer project, which um, passed overwhelmingly at town meeting, but um, has not passed our, our um, debt exclusion for, for the project. So. Um, I'll get to that a little bit later on, but we're planning another vote, some other stuff, so we'll talk about that when we get, when we get to that um, item. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to hit on before we get into the items? Um, well, oh, for Board of Health, I just want to mm -hmm. let everyone know that um, they are trapping mosquitoes. The, Board of Health, uh, the Department of Public Health is trapping mosquitoes here in town. Um, so far, nothing, there's been no... Um, disease load anywhere noted in, in the Pioneer Valley. There has been two Triple E samples today um, um, in Easton and New yeah. Bedford in Bristol County. Yeah. And then last week there was West Nile in disease Boston. in Boston. Yeah. So it's coming. Yeah. But right now um, the mosquitoes are not, as far as we know, they're not disease laden. It's been a late season. They just, yeah. with the way the rain was and spring just never kind of summer never got well here, it looked but like it was going to be horrific because it was so damp yeah but we then haven't it, had the heat then it had dried out and um so the the lava now is just starting to so prepare prepare, yeah. <laughs> prepare protect yourself um also what has been horrendous has been the ticks so you know whatever you can do to protect yourself if you if you food. have a tick that has bitten you please put it in a plastic bag you can go on our website and you can go to the tick report and you can send it in to, define, to decide what's going on. Mm -hmm. What is very um, awful is, uh, well, the good news is the d Lyme disease is fairly stable. It's about 36% mm -hmm. of the ticks tested. So, and that's been pretty consistent. It's been consistent between 34 and 37% um, for the last few years. However, what is happening, there are 19, if you, we have, the town has subsidized the tick tests, mm -hmm. and so there are 19 other um, bacterial infections that you can get from the, from the ticks. Mm -hmm. And that has gone from 2% to almost 10% of the ticks. So one in 10 have chances of these bacterial infections. And they actually are a lot worse than Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. and, and they can be passed in 15 minutes. So if you've had a tick, that has bitten you for more than 15 minutes, it's really critical that you, um, you know, find out if there's any, you know, kind of disease that it has, okay? And it, and it just $15, the town pays $15, and UMass um, subsidizes the rest. I'm hoping to get more grants um, later on, and, you know, as the year goes on, so we can continue to offer that. But right now, it's not a problem. There are plenty of opportunities for people to take tick tests. At and Carolyn, if somebody has has captured or secured a tick, then what do they, do they have to drive it to? No, 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 you can there... drive it and drop it off, and that bypasses okay. the mail. Okay, the, but you mass. can mail it, but there's a way to mail it. You put it in a plastic baggie, 
and they when you do the fill out the tick report it gives you a number and okay. you just write on the baggie the number okay and you put it in the envelope and it goes and then they test it and, and they're okay. really good they email you right back because when you fill out the tick report you give them the your email address and they okay. email you right back and they can get this all online yeah perfect you're just having to put up with the delay of mail but there's right. been a couple people this year that have just driven right down there they've been so concerned because it was on their kids right mm -hmm. that they went dropped it off had it within a couple hours okay. so I mean, so there it, is a place that identifies that they can do that too. They can go drop it off. Somewhere. It's a UMass yeah. lab. Every yep. you know, okay. you can get directions yep. to it. Okay. Please Excellent. get them tested. But right. it's you know, really feel like it's been for on peace you. of mind and also for our our information. It's really good to to have that done. Yeah. Well, I I agree. There's a, an uptick in that bacterial mm -hmm. infection, mm -hmm. even in animals too. It's mm -hmm. it's yeah. getting more prevalent. So. Yeah, it's pretty gross. So we. Um, we started kind of instituting a, our own kind of separate Board of Health meeting because there are made, you know, a lot of times the select board meeting gets overtaken with a lot of select board agendas and we, we tend to kind of combine them quite a bit. We're trying to break those out a little bit and we're hoping to have, I think, one next, next Monday. Next right. Monday. Yeah. Um, so we'll and that have will more be stuff to on, address. We're going to talk about our, um, we're, we're going to vote to, uh, to, to ban e-cigarette, fill flavored e-cigarettes. And um, the ta we'll have tattoo regulations. Mm -hmm. um, and I know just because we've been getting a lot of emails about um, the Eversource spraying, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the whole conversation is a little bit disconnected. So right now, Natalie um, Blaze, our representative, and Joe Comerford, our state senator, are involved in the process. Um, I'm reaching out to um, other people that have like in Asheville that ha but it's not like really organized at this point so I really don't have any information for people um, as <coughs> far as I know I said so we don't really know what's happening on at the moment um, on there it's it but it's power line own land so mm -hmm. I'm not you know to be a hundred percent up front there's not that much we can do at this point however wh it, what is concerning and what the reason why I think it's important to continue to organize and to follow through with this is that our town is the last town. As you know, um, over for town meeting, we had the mower, we, and it's a five-year program, and we manage it for five years, and then there, you know, we own the mower. Well, this is the last mower that they're going to sponsor. So does that mean they're going to go back to spraying on the roads sides again if they're not going to be mowing? And, um, you know, we worked really hard to get this mowing program going years and years ago to, um, so they wouldn't be spraying. So I think this is worth organizing and continuing the follow-up on that. Get and so, it. yeah, to find out what's going on on that. This is where, I think this is only the second year, though, right, of the five years? So yes. it's not yes, something that's going to happen next go. year. But it is worth making sure that they have some other kind of plan. Yeah, find out what their plan is. If besides they are, spring. Gonna be doing that. Right. Because yep. then, then it would be a major concern. Um, so any other, anything else before we move on to discussion items? Just not? I don't have anything. Okay. So um, let's see, we have a few um, one-day liquor licenses. So let me just get to those. We have a... Um, we have a one-day uh, wine and malt license uh, for the Big Brothers Big Sisters of Franklin County fundraising event that will be uh, taking place at Yankee Candle on uh, July 25th, uh, 2019, from six at, from six to nine p.m. Um, we have I, received I, uh, all the uh, yeah all the information needed on that. I make a motion that we approve that. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have the originals. You have the originals? Mm -hmm. We'll sign those. Um, I also have a one-day uh, wine and malt license for Atlas Farm event, which will be on uh, July 27th, 2019. That was uh, Blue Door Gatherings, who was um, doing an Atlas Farm feast in the fields on River Road in Deerfield. So. Was this the one that Al Mason was talking about? I, I think it was. Uh, I think so. I mean, I, I just I don't know if I should say but blue door gatherings is amazing so i oh i know i know it's no. going to be a really good really no, good thing that, i don't no, know how I it meant, works, is this the one that was having a hard time was this the one that was having a hard time getting the getting, getting their the stuff paperwork? together maybe 
No, no, I've, not th them. They were trying to connect with our office. Oh, oh okay. I, possibly. Maybe. I think we have everything now. Did um, they need? Yeah, we, we had a, um, yes, I believe okay. everything's together. I think we're still, we might still, did she get the liquor liability yet? We might, oh, I no, I think I that has that. been attached. So. Yes, we just had gotten that. Yep. We had gotten um, a general liability, but it didn't show the liquor liability, so we just got that. Okay. okay. Yes, it looks like we got that today. Because I, I had a couple um, t messages on that oh, one. Oh, yeah, and July I, 15th. We just got that. So. Okay. Yeah, it's all set. All right. So, uh, so I make a motion to approve that one. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have a two-day, um, two, we have two one-day wine and malt licenses for January, uh, excuse me, <laughs> July 20th, mm -hmm. 2019, and August 10th at, uh, at Yankee Candle. And these, um, let me see what these are. Christmas in July. Oh, yes, Christmas in July. And then the other was, uh, let me see, there's quite a few of them. That's here. the big brother. And then there's a big brother's big sisters. Yep. Yeah, we and already there voted was one that. Other, I think. Oh, fan, fan day event? Fan day event. Yep. Christmas okay. in July. Yep. Fan day event. There it was. So, so we, so, um, we have all the paperwork on that one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I make a motion, because I, I guess I don't see it. Um, I make a motion uh, to approve that one. I'll second. One second. Let me just check this. I, I ha the one I have is July the... July 20th. And then I have the August 19th one. July 25th. Yes, we do have that. That was fundraising event to be held on that night. I put them in daily. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, I think we, so that we, yeah, 20 fit, they're the two. So yeah. one was also. I have the 19. This is the one I have. I have the August 19th one. Okay. So we're not, 16, not one August 19. Yeah. It was an 810 that, that I'm looking for. The 810 one is the one we just voted yes, but I don't have the paperwork on that. Do you have that one? I don't have an 810. Where are you seeing Just may, maybe a misprint on uh, there. Maybe it is a misprint. What does it say on the application? It, it says, says 19. Oh, it's a misprint on the license. It should be 810. Okay. Because it's on the application correctly. As 810. So okay. So she just needs, we just need to reprint the license. She's okay. Okay. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then uh, let me just ma remake the motion. Okay. For August 19th. August 10th. August 10th. 10th. Oh. August 10th. 10th. Okay. Because we, I have the nineteenth. Yeah. So, okay. I'll have to redo it, but I'll just have you sign it for now. Okay. I just it. Just it. And there's the people pint, people's pint. We usually waive that with the. I mean, not people's pint. That's for the events, um, the bike events. Okay. Franklin oh, this land is trust. the next one. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, the land trust. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I make a motion um, to approve the um, Franklin Land Trust. Um, wait, wait one sec. We got to vote on the uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> the other two. So we had a motion on the 720 and yes. the 810. Mm -hmm. Second. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Thank you. I make oh, a sorry. motion for August 16th um, for the Franklin Land Trust D2 R2 event at um, uh, Mill, Village, Mill Road Village Road in Deerfield for People's Pint yep. and Artifact Cider. Okay. Um, that'll be from five to nine. Second on that? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. You said we waive the fee on that one? And, and we are waiving the fee on that one, yes. We, we have in the past, yes. Okay. On the, that's my understanding. That's what I've been... Well, because it's a charity. We usually do on the charity events. So I'll sign all those after. So we can keep rolling. <clears throat> um... So next next item is the uh, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District uh, FY20 for um, this would be the contract for the sludge hauling and disposal. Um, this is an area where we spend a boatload of money um, because of the amount of sludge that we produce at our failing infrastructure wastewater treatment plants. Um, we tend to ship out a lot more water than we need to. Uh, we don't have the equipment at the plant. These one of the things we were trying to get fixed is that we want to squeeze a lot more out of this stuff um, 
<laughs> and Literally. process the slut, <laughs> let's squeeze the water out Seriously. so we're, we're do, so that we dispose of much lighter uh, or much denser stuff. We're not shipping water and spending, you know, I've been seeing the bills are $10,000 to ship, you know, sludge and very few places are taking it. I, you know, some are shipping to Rhode Island at some points um, just to find places to take it. A lot of people will not take our stuff because it's so contaminated with everything that comes down the pipe um, and gets all the way through our system and out to the sludge pit. So um, anyway, so we have this contract with... Um, the Lowell with, Regional. Yep. So it's an MOU. Um, let me just read this here a second and just double check. So, so we're not going to Rhode Island anymore? Um, it must not be. No, we're going to Lowell. Now it's Lowell. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. Um, So we're being prorated per minute. It's a fortune. Oh my God. Eventually, like, there's a there's a plan for Greenfield to develop a. Um, just add it in my head. Well, anaerobic di digester to maybe process some of this stuff. That's a ways down the road. We're not nowhere near close to that, but that would be one way to help, you know, yeah. dispose of some of this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different plants that take this stuff and. Uh, process it I, I and then spread it out. I think even looking at stuff again. Yeah, they spread it out in the field and then dry it for, you know, several weeks and then it's compost. So um, right. there's a lot of different ways that we can be doing it and spend, instead of spending this amount of money to get rid of it, um, a lot of good things we can do in the future to make us more energy efficient, cost efficient. So, okay, so taking a Take a here a motion to approve this. I make a motion to approve it as presented for the Lowell Regional Wastewater Facility. What's the cost impact between Rhode Island and Lowell? Well, I don't have Rhode Island. I don't have Rhode Island's at the moment, but uh, Lowell Regional Wastewater Facility. The transportation cost per gallon is about just Five about cents. six cents yeah. per gallon. Um, disposal cost per gallon is about twelve cents for old Deerfield and um, just over 10 cents for South Deerfield is administration fee of $500 an annual flat rate fee but you know based on the uh, based on the bills you know that we're seeing it, it's a fortune it's a that's a whole bunch of money um, this is through the solid waste so the solid waste is the one that bids out the contract for us mm -hmm. and we we're just part of them and disposal at Lowell is based on a percent on percent solids, and we're not able to get the solids down because we're not squeezing the stuff out. So it just is a fortune. So, anyways, um, and we have two of these, right? You need both signed. Uh, both of them have to be signed. Oh, okay. So it's just a double double one. Yeah. Okay. One's for um, Janamine and one's for us. Okay. Any? We um, have a second on this. Did we hear one? Don't we have a press in Old Deerfield? Uh, I don't know if it's still working. We had one in the Old Deerfield and the South Deerfield one too, but that that's not working either. Hmm. They have a way to try to settle it. It broke. Mm -hmm. Among a list of other stuff. Uh, yeah, it's it's just not cost effective. We need to, we need to tackle all of it. We need to take get the headworks to get all the junk out of it to begin with. So we're not spending all that money disposing stuff that shouldn't be in there to begin with. Yeah, it's a lot. We have a plan. Um, well, okay, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have originals to sign? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. I think I'll sign all those at the end. Keep going along here. Uh, there, we do have a uh, sewer abatement request, and this was for um, Nick. Nick, um, yes. Nick, why don't you come yeah, up and come up and explain what happened? What, what happened? So we, we can yeah. explain why we're doing this. 
So uh, well, I do want to just before I start, I'm sorry, excuse me. I just want to mention that it was actually requested by the South, the, the water district themselves, yes. because they Correct. recognized, they recognized there was an the error. Problem. So I just want to clarify yep. that. Yep, mm -hmm. they did. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, so I purchased a property on 34th Air Street, uh, Nicholas Orsini, um, in May of 2016. Uh, when I received my first bill, I thought it was weird that it was kind of high. I wasn't living there at the time. I was renovating it, so there shouldn't really have been any usage, but it was, I'm like, I've got contractors in and out, and mm -hmm. there's some water usage, so I just paid it. And then um, then once there was actually someone living in it, I looked at the usage and compared it to what we were paying in Montague, yep. how many gallons we were using, and I'm like, it's almost double. Right. So I went and investigated to see if there were leaks in the property. The meter was not running when there were no faucets on, so I couldn't establish that there was a leak anywhere. Right. Um, so I had put in a request with um, Roger at the time if they could find time to come and look exactly. at it and see if the meter's not reading right or what's going on. Um, he talked about how busy the town was, and he said they'd get to it when they can get to it. And... Uh, Basically, every time I paid a bill, I was like, you know, hey, are you going to make it out here? I'm still paying high right. bills. Um, the last time I paid my bill, um, I mentioned it uh, as I was writing the check, the water department, like, hey, I'd still love to get someone out there. And she said uh, that she'd have someone give me a call. They called me back within an hour. And we had made an appointment for them to come look at the meter the next day. Uh, they walked in the basement. And they said, hey, the meter on your line is meant to be on a larger diameter line. Basically, you're getting charged almost two gallons for every one gallon you're using because gotcha. it thinks twice as much is going right, through what right. actually is. So yeah. basically, I've almost been paying a double bill right. since I purchased the house. So um, I'm glad you got it sorted out. Yeah, yeah. So they, they <laughs> the, did. The and it took guy. them three seconds to establish, like, oh yeah, that's totally the wrong meter. That shouldn't be on there. It's supposed to be on a larger diameter line. The new water person is very nice. Um, so okay, then I, I mean so, I don't. So I, they've gone back and done the calculations. The yeah. water department did, and then Barbara right. also did, and and so the. Um, the abatement that we're seeking is $2,664.13 on the sewer. And I'm sure you've already dealt with the water department. Yeah, the water department um, basically dish. cut me a check within a week of changing the meter. And okay, good. So they've taken care of their end of it, and they said they passed all the information on to you guys. To yep. Yep, that's yeah. what is here. And just to be clear, that's for a period over a it couple is. years. Yes, so it's couple not years. one year or one, one period. No, so since, it's a since 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, Yep. So, so a motion? yes, I'll make a motion to approve um, uh, abatement of two thousand six hundred sixty-four dollars and thirteen cents based on the calculations that have been worked out. Any second? No okay. second. All those in favor? Um, or just any for other, discussion. Any discussion. Thank you. Um, Barb didn't mention whether there'd be an issue with abatement over multiple years, did she, Diana? She did not mention it. No, oh, okay. whether there would be. Sometimes there is, so. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yes, Thank you, Nick. It. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Hmm. So, next item um, is appointments, and I'm just not sure if we have openness if we've got we're still looking for certain um, appointments to different boards or we have vacancies um, yes. so there are still uh, three vacancies on the 350th anniversary committee um, and then agricultural committee there are two alternate vacancies uh, let's see. Should we? Oh, so I should probably be appointing the people that are listed as July 17th, correct? Because we haven't had a meeting since then. So, um, 
anything that's in blue here. I don't know. You probably don't have this, right? No. no, I don't no? have it. Let me go make some copies of this. No, no, that's mm -hmm. okay. You can sure. just... I'll read them out. Yeah. So we already appointed a number, huh? We did, we did appoint quite a few. There were some that hadn't been appointed, so I'll just run through the ones in blue here and, and maybe make, make a mention for anybody that's interested in the other ones that are still in pink. Um, so that the ad hoc town committee, uh, town common committee has been meeting, meeting for a while. Um, these are just one year ad hoc committee. So Trevor McDaniel, I make a motion to approve Trevor McDaniel, Roger A. Benson, uh, Gregory uh, Franceschi, Melissa Hale, uh, Catherine Hart, Pamela Hodgkins, Catherine Lawless and Pamela Predmore. Um, the only thing is, I don't think uh, Greg lives in town anymore. He's back. Oh, he's back? Yep. Okay. Yep, he's back. All right, I make a motion to, or second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's see. And then, uh, so again, the Agricultural Commission has two vacancies. Um, it looks like the, I don't know where, where the bylaw review com advisory committee is at right now, but there were three vacancies. Um, I, I'm not sure what we're going to do on that still, though. Okay. I, so, I think that's on hold because Barbara is. She's working out what she needs to do. Yeah. Well, we have, we hired someone to do some of the review that they were doing. So it didn't make sense to have two different groups reviewing this stuff. So they were, so we were going to allow Barbara to finish. Mm-hmm. And then, then have. And have the committee look, yeah. look at what she's done. So it looks like uh, on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, the select board rep would need to be um, appointed by us. Francis Sobieski is uh, already from the Board of Assessors, and I'm not sure if the other boards have listed there. I think that uh, from the school, I believe that Ken Cudebeck was still going to continue with that. Yeah. Um, at least we had voted that at our meeting. I know that. So. I don't mind continuing as a select board member unless Davis won't really wants to do it. Not at the time. Okay. Okay. So I'll just keep doing it. So, and I don't have the other, the uh, town, town moderator and finance committee I'm not sure about, and the planning board I'm not sure about. So we could make a motion. I'll make a motion for Carolyn Ness for the select board rep and Ken Cutterback for the uh, school committee rep. Second. Um, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, actually, can we go back to the 350th anniversary? Yeah. And can can you all appoint me? Mm -hmm. um, because we're um, during the summer months here. We're having some. I've been a non-voting person, mm -hmm. but we're having a problem with quorums. Okay. So if um, if I'm a voting person, then I count in the quorum. Okay. So could I temporarily be? Of course. Be on the Anybody? Do you have any? I don't have an issue with that. Um, so make a motion to appoint Carolyn Ness as a voting member of the 350th Anniversary Committee. Second. Thank you. And um, love to have, you know, other members of the other, public Other people join, can please. please come. It's just a lot of work to do. We still have two vacancies, even if I'm a voting member. But I will certainly step back down again. I mean, I still go, but I, right now, just I need to be counted as a body. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, we didn't vote on it, though. Yeah, we did. Oh, did? Mm -hmm. No. Right? We're All right. Good. Hi. You're in. <laughs> okay. I was so worried that people, I don't want to turn people off. And no, buy, no. You know, please come. Um, the Community Preservation Committee, we need a, somebody recommended by the select board. I guess we haven't appointed somebody on that yet. Uh, and then planning board needs a member and open space needs a member. I don't have anybody at the moment, so we'll pass that. Right yeah, I was just, I don't um, have, we don't have any letters of interest, I don't think. Um, we only have one fence viewer, but that's fine, I think. Um, there, is, there are two vacancies on the finance committee, but those are moderator appointed, so that's up to the moderator. The Franklin County, uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments rep. That's usually you. No, I guess that's me. So I'll take a motion there. I make a motion to appoint Trevor. You can do an alternate. Yeah. A we'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, historical Commission, there is a two vacancies. So if anyone's interested in the Historical Commission, with all our 350th stuff 
going on. That'd be great. Um, open space committee. Uh, we have an opening. I already did this side. Thank you. I think that's uh, personnel board. We have uh, some openings on the personnel board. We have um, three vacancies. Three vacancies. person I know was interested in that. Uh, the sewer study committee, there is, um, I don't believe, I'm not sure how many of these people still wanted to be on that. Um, so I'd be interested to hear with a lot of work coming up. Um, Probably, so I mean, I, I, would, I would think that we'd want to meet at least once a month. Mm -hmm. We're looking for at least once a month commitment while we're doing the project. Mm -hmm. If not more. Well, yes, yeah. but I, I would say it would look like a once a month at least commitment. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can reach out and see if these are, are still interested, and if not, well, we have vacancies anyways. Yeah, so. I don't know who you have on there, but we have heard from several that have said no. And, and they've pulled their name I believe off, so. as so far if, as if I know. If they're on there, I don't think we've heard anything. I'm not sure we've actively so reached let's, out. So let's actively reach out and okay. see where they are, and that way we'll know how many vacancies we have. Um, we've done EMS swim program. There's a vacancy there. Town Memorial Forest Committee. That's highlighted for some reason. Well, that's normally the or the select board in the past have done that, but it, you know we don't really do anything, um, or we don't have time to do anything. So if there's anybody that's interested. Uh, you know, there are opportunities to do forest management plan. We have to fill out the paperwork through NRCS. I certainly can help. Um, we, we, should, we should have an active, somebody that's really interested in forests. Mm -hmm. So if there's any interest besides the select board, we would love to have you step forward. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there at the moment. Um, So there was, um, I guess maybe we were just going to take a vote on this. I was uh, talking with one of the other, um, so this is a vote to approve um, FY20 weekly hours budgeted for the South County Senior Center Director. Our, uh, the Board of Oversight had voted in our, in our budget that she would be uh, working instead of 34, 36 hours. We'd love to see that go to 40 at some point when we have enough programming, but we only budgeted for 36. Um, just through internal paperwork, that's that something's been held up on her pay. So we just wanted to take a vote here today if that's our responsibility. We have a board of uh, oversight meeting coming up on the 27th, and we're also going to take another vote there just to make sure that whatever um, yeah. payroll needs were yeah. covered. I, I don't think there's a question about that it's been voted. It is vo it's been voted by the Board of Oversight. It's been voted by the Board of Select or the Select Board. It's been voted by the Finance Committee. And in fact, it's been voted meeting. by town meeting. It's in the budget. Um, it's just a matter there? of the paperwork. What, what we don't have, what we're missing, it seems, is just a form that basically articulates when a person changes their weekly schedule to hours. And mm -hmm. the payroll department needs that, not so much um, for the pay, although that is a drive you know part of it it's for the benefits because if you are um, more than 20 but less than 40 your benefits are prorated based on your weekly work schedule gotcha. your, your paid time off so if somebody goes from 34 to 36 or changes weekly hours it's meaningful in the accrual rates mm -hmm. so we're not doing the best job about getting them those changes in those hours um, consistently. So one okay. of the things Barbara and I talked about we will work on is um, putting together, I'd like to have them hopefully available on the 31st for you to approve, but I just want you guys to adopt a new a new hire form and an, a personnel change form, which has all the information that they need on it. Mm -hmm. You guys sign, finance signs, department, whoever needs to sign. There's all the appropriate sign-offs on it. It goes, you know, it has where mm -hmm. it goes and all of that so that there's Makes not sense. any question because sometimes they're asking for an offer letter. Um, but in this case, there's no offer letter. She's already right. employed. So um, as opposed to just change. doing a letter, and I think it would just be good to have a form 
Um, we can still do offer letters, but yeah. we still have a personnel change form and a new hire form that has all the information that payroll needs. And I think it's, it's as simple as that. I don't think it's a matter of um, them not, it's just them needing some kind of written documentation. So okay, then, then I guess I make a motion that we write up the property, <laughs> the proper documentation and form for the additional hours because I, I know mm -hmm. it was approved at town meeting as mm -hmm. well as the finance committee. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Already. So, I mean, it's a done. I hear a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yep. All right, so I'll give that to them and that you voted it, confirmed yep. it tonight. Thank you. Yep. Um, so uh, let's see. So, uh, uh, Sh Sharon's not here yet, so I just wanted to talk about opening up the senior center for the weekend. But no, so ahead. she. We'll wait until she comes. Come, yeah, I guess wait right. until she comes. So, um, you know, our last item before not anticipated um, business was the um, just an update on the wastewater treatment plant. And maybe that's Sharon now. Um, Update on the wastewater treatment plant upgrade um, oh, and, yeah, to, sure, and, a, sure. and a motion and a call for a vote for uh, a special election for the debt exclusion vote for the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant upgrades on uh, September 9th, 2019. Right, so, so you might remember if you to call a special election, um, you're supposed to give the town clerk 35 days notice. So yep. if you vote tonight, that puts us in line. Um, if you schedule it for September 9th, that puts you right around the, yeah. it's a little over the 35 yep. days, but it gives us enough time. Enough time. Um, I, I think it should be done in September, but I, I just was hoping that we could have a little bit of discussion about, about the strategy of mm -hmm. what, how, how are we going to convey the information? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously there's very low turnout, but very low turnout. there was also the people had questions. Mm -hmm. all, all of us had questions. They so. did, and we had tried to reach out to council. You know, there are certain laws that come into play when you're um, when you're dealing with an election, um, an about election. That um, we had reached out to council and said, "Can we put a fact sheet with you know with this? Can we put a blurb that says what this does?" You know, a lot of times you'll see that in questions when you go to the ballot. You know, you'll get a booklet and it'll say what this means, what this is. Um, council had said we could not spend, you know, the town couldn't take a, any money to take a position on anything or I sense I've seen an email. Is that right? That's correct. Maybe that wasn't the completely accurate. Correct. Yeah. Well, so, basically, well, what she, what she had originally said is if we wanted to do fact sheets, it had to be voted at town meeting, that that had to be approved at town meeting. She since process. said that we don't, that doesn't require a town meeting vote for us to just do the fact sheets, but the process still is, remains. In other words, you have to have a proponent and an opponent write equal Mm -hmm. um, equal information, basically, mm -hmm. just like they do at the state. You've seen yep. them in the state booklets before. So you'd right. have to find a proponent. It's not you. It's right. somebody, you know, it's so you maybe somebody in the public, in the public and you find a proponent that thinks it's a good project and writes why and all of that information. And then you find an opponent that writes why and all that information. And you have to present both sides equally if you do it that way. So, you so can present... If you want to present a fact sheet to town meeting alongside the ballot, basically. So at, at the election, if you want to have a fact sheet, it has to be done that way. The town can't use any resources or present information that doesn't present both sides of the argument equally, basically. However, or both sides of the up until equally. then, we can spend time explaining exactly. what the issues are at the plant why the need is to upgrade that plant. I just can't say you need to vote for this. You can, actually. Well, I can Trevor personally, McDaniel, but not as an elected as official, selector. elected officials can say anything they want and do anything they want. In Appointed private. officials cannot, and we cannot use any kind of town resources, and you cannot use any kind Correct. of town resources right. to advocate. So you right. can't go print out flyers, but right. you can talk to anybody as an elected official mm -hmm. in any way, but as an appointed official, you, you know, if you're appointed by the town, you cannot, you have the same, you have limitations as well. So. Right. So can we have, maybe we should have like 
an open house now. Yes. A sewer treatment oh, plant. I love that. <laughs> I mean. No, there's, uh, I've, I've been listening to people's comments over the last, you know, we haven't met again since, since we had the vote, um, but I've been listening and soliciting some comments back on why people voted one way, why they voted another way, what their confusion was, and I've gathered quite a bit of information. I've, um, I've interviewed people, I have uh, taken videos, I've gathered a lot of data and uh, to support the need for the work and um, how much this negative vote jeopardized our chance of getting any money. Um, so that's really my biggest concern is, is ha have we blown the chance for a USDA grant in this cycle? Um, I don't know that answer yet. We're, we're, trying to get, um, we're trying to get some feedback on that from USDA. Uh, there were 11 communities vying for a very small amount of money because, as you know, on the federal level, there's been no infrastructure money. Um, this money was um, available, and we were in a really good shot to get it. Um, this vote um, has put that in jeopardy. Um, there are other communities that have approved their, their expenditure, and, um, you know, I, my biggest worry is that tomorrow that plant fails, the electrical fails, anything happens to that plant, we can't process, we miss permit. Um, now we're forced by DEP to do the upgrades that we know need to get done and we have no help to do it. Um, or we start getting fined, um, which, you know, I don't know how long they will be forgiving. Um, you know, they'll look back at the history of the town and what they've been doing to try and get this fixed. Um, you know, I don't know how long they'll, you know, they'll allow. I mean, you saw yesterday or the day before, Montague's, you know, for some reason had missed um, how much chlorine they were, they, they ran out of chlorine or some level of chlorine was not in contact in the final clarification contact chamber before it hit the river. And that's a, that's a huge no-no. And I just can't even imagine, you know, all of our toilet flushes don't stop. They run down that hill. They hit a grinder that is not spinning. They go into the aeration tank that's not aerating. Um, the bugs die they have no oxygen. It then all flows into our, our only clarifier, which is broken already, um, hits the contact chamber and is right out to the river. Wipes, you know, toilet paper, syringes, um, you, you name it. Just dental sneakers, floss. dental floss, all of that stuff is just going straight out to the river if we don't have anything fixed. Our electrical is, is way gone. A lot of the electric, electrical engineers have said the, um, the buses and are, are very old and they're all pitted, so they're just not making good electrical contact. They're, they've said there's nowhere else to put them. You know, they're, they're, they're gone. You can't get that stuff anymore. It's old, so you have to pull it out and replace it. There's really nowhere to do that. You can't do a second one on site. The space is really small, so we have a ton of work to do. Um, it's not like we don't. There are decisions to be made on, you know, who we hire, what we decide to do first and second. Um, but no one, I mean, we've gone for 10 years, people have told us we need a headworks program. So we need, you know, we know that the uh, aeration fans that stir up the stuff when you drive by, you see them spinning. That sucks more electricity than almost anything else in town. That thing's just sucking. Uh, electricity constantly and it's only stirring up you know maybe five or six feet of that thing it may get down to the bottom but you know that's 15 feet deep it's almost a half a million gallons of water and everything we flush down the toilet just swirling around in there getting caught up in the fans um it all can be taken out of there so um we need to take these steps and and do this and to just ignore it isn't going to fix the problem um we need to get an approval to do some sort of expenditure on this project and then pull together as a community um, and start to decide what items will be first, what items will be next. This appropriation was um, the, we picked $19 million because of the amount, the grant we went for was $13 million. That was because we were gonna do the first phase of the project down there. In speaking with, the officials in town and engineer, we felt like, well, if we're gonna be there and it's just gonna cost us more money every year, why don't we just fix that plant? Everything that needs to happen in phase one and three, there right now, um, so we can handle whatever comes down the road. That 
was an estimate of around 19 million. That still needs to get um, hashed out. Maybe it's a little less. You know, it's not going to be a whole lot less, but it's going to be, you know, could be less money. We don't know until we get all the bids back, but we can't go out for bids until we get some sort of appropriation. We can't get any help from USDA unless we have an appropriation. So we have this one step to hurdle first, which is past 98% at town meeting. Um, we need to pass this hurdle and then we can decide what engineers we're gonna use, what steps we're gonna go, how much money we can get from USDA and start rolling forward with a plan to get it done. Um, I don't know, I don't see another plan at the moment, so. Kip, of course you can. Hi. Hi. I'm Kip Kamos on Greenfield Road. Um, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Uh, first of all, was that sludge uh, contract for a year or for three years? For a year. I mean, for a year? I think a year. Well, that's yes. good, because now we have two places, Cranston and Lowell, to go. Um, Trevor, I heard you I, say... I, I, don't, I don't think Cranston's taking mm -hmm. us anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an option. These were... It, they, it was a cheaper bid, so that's why they're switching to Lowell. I, well, they had Cranston had problems with oh, sludge. Sludge, sludge with our sludge, so yeah, it's not good. they were ready to kick us out anyway. Right. But whatever. I'm yeah. glad we got some place to go right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, Trevor, you, I, I think I heard you say at the last finance committee meeting you were going to have a, a meeting on the July 25th for yeah, information, is that still going to happen? Uh, I haven't set that in stone yet. That's what I'm hoping to do, but I, there's a lot okay. of things coming into play, and I want to make sure enough people can be involved and have enough um, notice. So, yeah, so you'll not notify people by course. the website or yes, whatever. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay. Trevor, I think what's really important here is to find out what's going on with the USDA. Do you know, I mean, they, we, do we have any further information? No, this I mean, vote this, wasn't this favorable. So, you know, I mean, we, we probably have, um, a, and they're waiting for us to say, you know, they gave us a soft commitment. And then when we said, no, we're not interested in going ahead with this project, you know, I, I don't have an answer yet. David's trying to work with them. He's been sending, um, he's been sending a lot. They've been asking for a lot more information that he's been trying to, you know, he's doing over and above what we contracted him to do to try and get them to, um, Hang in there. Hang in there. So do, you, do they know that we have another vote? We don't, yeah. Okay, so, so yes. you're, Diana or somebody's going to yes. notify them tomorrow. Exactly. Right? But we've scheduled this. No, this. And, they, and they are still, I know just from talking to Brenda today, that I know James is still working they are with still them working because through. they have been readily asking for, inf for information. They asked today for some audited financial statements for our capital plan. So I think they're just looking to see if, you know, what we have in terms of, of, of you know, support to Okay, because it's forward. really important. I, I mean, I think this is going to impact people's vote because if, if we have $3 million on the table from somebody, that's better than nobody, no Absolutely. money. And so, you know, at least we can start some of the repairs and certainly the clarifier will be covered. Right. That we have to go, I mean, we're under mandatory mm -hmm. um, by DEP to do that. So, Correct. Um, to me, that's a huge informational it is. feature. So, oh, I, yeah. I mean, I don't want to schedule an informational night. That's why I'm kind of hesitating on the date. Yeah, I was hoping to have some information. I talked to David this week. We're going we're gonna to hook back up, hopefully, at the end of the Cause, week. Because today's the 17th, <clears throat> the 25th. It's too it's, soon. It's, I mean, I almost feel like we have to go into August mm -hmm. just so we can have the most update. And, and I also feel that... Before we have the informational night, we have to decide from a strategy point of view, and maybe Kip, you can decide whether, I mean, have some input on this, as to what, is it, is it really productive to have a site visit, you know, an open house, mm -hmm. so people can really see what kind of condition the stuff is in before yeah. or after the information Well, I thought, I thought it could be before or during. Um, I had done a, a lot of video uh, speaking with the operator, um, video so that would explain how that stuff comes into the plant, what we're looking at, all the fats and grease that are in their aeration that should not be in there at all. Um, I know. Almost 75% of the aeration tank on any given day is covered with, you know, this much fat, oil, and grease. So the bugs are not working on changing ammonia. Um, 
and doing all the chemical work that they need to do. They're, they're trying to eat icebergs of fat, oil, and grease that shouldn't even be in there because we don't have a headworks program to pull all that stuff out of there. So, you know, I think Kip will agree. The headworks is probably the most important thing we could do. I mean, if we did nothing else, we need a headworks. We need some way to pull all that trash, grit, T-shirts, wipes, dental floss, all of that's got to stop from going into the plant. It's just destroying it. So, I mean, if we did nothing else, that needs to happen. After you do that, we need a much more energy efficient aeration tank system. We need a much better, we need a secondary clarifier. Did, could you elaborate on what the USDA or what your version of a soft commitment is? Yes, they, they, had, they had at that time talked about a two and three, uh, two and three eighths or two and 2.375 rate for a 40 year note and uh, about a two and a half million dollar um, bond, I mean, a uh, grant. grant. And, but, but I mean, is, what was their commitment? That's what they were that's, committing to? Yeah, that's what they had talked about. We might be in favor of this. They might be in favor of that, okay. Because <clears throat> um, there was only about six million dollars to be spread around all of Massachusetts right. and 11 communities looking for it. It was leftover money from yeah. someplace. Did, Whether that'll happen in the end, I don't know. Right. Can, can you tell me, did the town ever receive a final report on the most recent sewer assessment from no, uh, has, DPC? We, have, we have it drafted, but it hasn't been completed. Why? Well, they've been paid for it for over two months. Why haven't they completed because it? Because we haven't settled on exactly what we want it to be. The consent order is going to go in. We've got a lot of things to put together in that report. I mean, the report is, is essentially mm -hmm. done. Yep. We just haven't labeled it complete. How, uh, how many consent orders or non-compliance orders for violations at the sewer plants does the, does the town currently have? We have, we have the one consent Just, order that we're working on. We, right. you know, as you know, a lot right. of the stuff we fixed last time, which was reporting errors, um, and we've been talking with them about um, giving us a little bit of teeth uh, and nudging to get help us with the USDA grant. Right. Um, that is just about complete, that letter. And we've been working with DEP on that. Um, they've been very, very accommodating to get that to us. On that, <clears throat> on that consent order that was dated October of 2018, uh, there were seven items. Mm -hmm. And two of the seven items, one was the alarm system at Cap Captain Lathrop. Yep. That had been in the process and it has been fixed. Yep. And the other one was the uh, arm on the clarifier that's in the process of being fixed. Correct. But the other five were just either mistakes by the operations Correct. or just lack of maintenance by mm -hmm. our own department. For that. Right. So, yeah. yep. those, um, are, uh, those have all been fixed as far as I know, right? I mean, right. I think so. They were fixed off. that weekend. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They were. Um, and there haven't been any other consent orders for the town in the last five years that I was aware of or I was able to find uh, no. any information like that. No. Not uh, anything. That, uh, everything has been fixed in, uh, you know, almost immediately yep. when they came in. Yeah, yeah, I, you're right. Because I mean, most not, of it, not equipment-wise, but I meant you know paperwork. Paperwork-wise, a lot of it Keith had sent in, and it just because of the electronics, they they were Within misplaced the and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, the, in the original consent order of October 24th, the town was given 90 days to do this, and uh, we didn't do it. Um, well, we negotiated with them to push it out a year. Well, we didn't really even hire Mr. Prickett till near the end of that, anyways. Yeah, because we were in negotiation with DEP to push correct. it out. And so, consequently, we have not been fined at all. No, thank because goodness. No, they no. gave us time to fix it. So it, it's true to say the DEP doesn't want to fine the town. They just want no, compliance. No, of course not. Yeah, okay. So we have, I, we have until, do you know, I think it's just until I February. think what he's getting at is that, is that there isn't a serious urgency here. No, I, I guess what I'm saying is that I, I was going to say the, the $10,000 a day fine that I keep hearing was where did it come from? And from it, that fine only comes into play if we choose to ignore their compliance order or we just don't fix it, correct? Right, or, but, or, or if we you get have out a of failure. Permit. Right. If we're out of permit. Right, right. right. But it's I been, mean, if it's been there for 40 break, years. Yeah. And it well, hasn't. that's the problem, Kip. It's been there 40 years right. and it hasn't been upgraded. So if you look at the electrical, if you look at the equipment, yeah. that thing could fail tomorrow. There's, yeah, but we, could, put a, right? we put a playground 75 feet from high speed train too. That could crash. It's not too. a playground. The school? I said that. I understand that, but you said could. I, mean, I, I said over at the school right over here, we Apples put a playground 75 Apples feet from a high-speed train. It has nothing to do it's with okay. it. Um, 
I wanted to know what process did you use to choose the engineer to fix the clarifier project? We chose Prickett. What, what was the process for? I mean, I, I came here on the Wednesday after elections and I kind of asked you or explained to you why you should, you know, take into other considerations. Yeah. 45 minutes later after I left, Carolyn moved to award it and David seconded it. Mm -hmm. And I was just wanted to ask any one of you what process you went through to choose him. Well, we, we've worked with David Prickett. I, I, I trust the information he gave us. We don't have to go through a, a bidding process to choose a wastewater engineer. Um, well, considering you had two bids in front of you, I didn't have one two for one hundred thirty-seven thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars. You chose that one over a bid for eighty-seven thousand dollars. I didn't have another qualified. bid. I have them both right here. Yes, but they, I can't entertain that bid, Kip, because we didn't go out to bid. I no, can't. No, you, no, you no, had no, no, no. Well, Kip, this is a. This, I can't you, break your, the law. That's what you're saying. I cannot you break can, the law and go out to bid when I already didn't set up a plan to go out to bid. So I can't just take a bid out of thin air. How did you take David's? Because Mr. we Prickett's. chose David as our engineer. We went through a whole. We went through a whole process. You wasted fifty thousand no, dollars of taxpayers' that, money because the other bid didn't even account for all the engineering work that has to go in for the for the temporary clarifier. That's exactly what it did. No, it didn't. Did you read it? Yes, I read it. It, it, it's actually a better contract because it provided so. for more meetings. It was provided for more oversight. We'll disagree on this, Kip. Well, you can disagree on it, but yep. I mean, it's in black and white. Yep. And, and you happen to chose, you, you basically are saying that you chose Mr. Prickett because you liked him and he's worked for the town before. Uh, no, because I, I believe in the, pro the plan and the process he has going forward. But and the qualifications just, of the town. Did you have an additional second bid, though? What no, is he I cannot. To? He's referring to a bid that, <laughs> that that a member of the town went out on his own and got a whole second bid for this project. For the secondary clip. This the isn't secondary the original clarify. straw poll discussion. But there was a, no. Okay, there was okay. a specification. Just, so, we didn't, so we didn't go out. It's not a legal I have it right. It's not a and legal it wasn't bid, the, so and I can't look at it. there wasn't a list of specifications. Okay. It wasn't a specific find, just to be agreed clear. upon specifications because. Okay. As best as I know, the definition of bid is a, is a formal process. Right. There has to be a process. This appears to be a proposal that came in from right. somewhere else. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. The vocabulary correct. Yeah. Correct. This is a proposal from wherever versus a bid process. Right. Right. Okay. Just so everyone's so, clear here. Yeah. So thank you. Knowing the fact that you had you could have gotten a better price, why did you not wait and, and look for a because better price? We're under a gun to get this done. I think that we had a good plan. I believe in all of the stuff David put forward. And I think we're, and we're moving go ahead with, with the clarifier. We have to fix the clarifier. Well that, I understand you have we're to We're running fix the against the deadline. So the the debt exclusion failure has nothing to do with fixing the clarifier. No, I we already that. have voted the money. We've already moving ahead with that. I and understand. that's happening no matter what. I understand. But what I And this my, is my all point that these David <clears throat> is that's all we awarded him was to fix a clarifier that we're under the gun to fix. I understand that. But the deadline for DEP was ninety days after October twenty fourth. Through working with DEP saying, look at we are working David diligently did that work. to David did that. do this. We are going to fix this. Our they engineer David us. did that work, Kip, to extend that time for us. I, I understand that. Right. So, so then I'm we, going to go, thanks for extending it. I'm not interested in working with you. I mean, uh, Kip, come on. It, no. I, Trevor, it's, it's upsetting to me because you're wasting taxpayers' dollars. I am not wasting what, taxpayers' dollars. I talk to the people from DEP myself, mm -hmm. and I ask them, what is the deadline? And they say, as long as you can get this work done, we'll work with the town, because that's Correct. what we want is compliance. So when you say we'll our engineer was not on retainer, Mr. Prickett called and did the same thing I did. Said, look, mm -hmm. the town's moving forward. They want to fix this thing. Can we I have some time? doing a little more than what time? you did, Kip. Maybe a little bit more. But the bottom line is you didn't You're you not didn't an engineer, even, Kip. I mean, you I obviously- I say I was an well, engineer. Well, then you can't do everything he's doing. So you, you know, okay. you're not involved with all those meetings, all the extra stuff he's been doing for us. And, and you want to know why the taxpayers question, you know, when you say trust me, because of decisions like this. Mm -hmm. $50,000 out the window I, because you didn't- I think a lot of the reason it failed is because you went door to door telling people not to vote for this. 
I didn't go door to door. Well, you, you, took, not a, yet. you took an effort to, to, to not, kill this project, Kip, well, when you know that, that, the, that the needs are great and the time is short on this. Okay, let's go to the next question. No, I let's have. finish that. So that's kind of the reason that that failed. I think there's other reasons. There's only too, that 36 I've heard. votes. It was only 36 votes. You know, I votes think it's working against out. the best there's interest of the town to, okay. to, to actively try and kill a project we all needs to happen. And I know that we're going to go out. We're going to have other bids. Mm -hmm. Nothing is set in stone going forward on this project. But what's set in stone is we've got a huge setback because of that effort. And we well, might lose you, three. Well, we might is, lose our money with the USDA. What, That's serious taxpayer money, Kip. Yep. Just like the Mass Works grant for the last time. Well, you Kip. can't ignore this. We're pretty a ways down no, the way. Not, I'm not ignoring it. it. I'm trying so. to help get it done the correct way. So, what do you, would you agree sure. that the biggest problem with the uh, sewer treatment plant is the rags and everything that goes in? Because I heard you say that the Headworks project is, is the, the most biggest important. Thing. Because but so is the clarifier. So is the, the electrical. Goes so into is there. the sludge container. So is the you know, all the piping, so is the generator right. inside the building. They're, and that's just all one plant. They're You've all got important the other things. one that is just as bad. But you still, the biggest problem is the rags and all of the stuff that goes in there because it ends up wrecking that the That is a big fire. problem. And it also all of the grit and but stuff. But I'm not ignoring the all the rest of the issues, Kip. I'm, I'm not saying you got to. Three years ago, a solution was brought to this board about putting a channel cleaner in to get rid of all of the rags, the needles, and all of the other debris that would be processed, squashed, decontaminized, and put in a dumpster. That, that, would push that, was, your, that, was, your, that was your proposal, and it's still open for well, suggestion, it's not, but it hasn't it been acted on, and you I, didn't win that, you didn't persuade enough people to move that forward. I didn't so, try to persuade anybody. I just brought been, that forward because exactly. I got it from other people. Of course. Where it was. And, you know, when you, when you talk about spending $19 million, you know, you can do this over time as you were going to plan to do anyways. Correct. But you could do a headworks project for a lot less money. Of course you can. You know. But we can't well, do any of it without you, an appropriation. You're trying to ask people to spend $19 million. I'm not asking anybody to spend $19 million. I'm asking well, them to appropriate the amount of money that has been budgeted that they think would take to do the work. Whether it comes in, the, look, the roof was appropriated at the school for $1.8 million, right? And how much did that come out? Three million. So right, three million. You guys, everybody, we worked together. You did a lot of the work and got it down, what, half the price. So, you know, that's the that's the process. You just just because you appropriate nineteen million dollars doesn't mean you're spending it tomorrow. That, and you still have another whole that plant is a good to work point on. That I'm trying to say because of the mistakes that were made in front of that project, it was a lot of work to change that, and that's what I'm trying to do There's, here. Look. There's a lot of mistakes. You cannot just give people these large contracts and trust this one person. I'm and not trusting anybody that's yet. That's what Kip. you've been doing. No, well, it is not what I've been doing. We've been working with the same firm that you were here working with. Yep. All of us have been working. Sewer Study Committee. We're moving forward on the secondary clarifier. Has to get done. Getting it done. But that's David's that's done a, a lot issue, of work. Huh? It is separate issue. So now we need appropriation. And then we can get down to business, everybody putting their head together, how much we're going to do, what steps we're going to do it in. We haven't even decided whether we're going to do that first and then go to, home, then go to Old Deerfield right after. But, we're but, trying to get this ball rolling, Kip, and you're not going to have a solid figure on everything before you get started. You can do Just it business. in sections, and that's the proper way of doing of it. Of course because it is. Because you're looking, you're asking people to appropriate or not to appropriate, so it is. This debt exclusion for $19 million, then you're going to say you're going there. That's going to be another $19 million. That's mm -hmm. going to add $2,000 to the average uh, sewer users right away. Never mind not the right tax away. on top. That's, if that's you you wrong. You're telling that's people not, well, wrong. Well, wrong information. Really? How's yes, that? you are, because you're saying automatically you're going to get $2,000 bill. That's not how it works. Really? Do not how do start you? educating people and misinformation them you know, with all this stuff, it just, it's, it's, it's disrespectful. It's not right to the people to get information that is not right. Then take out your calculator. I don't and need take to. take $19 million and divide it out and of see course, what the people are going to pay. If you're going to do that uh, tomorrow, if, you, if I took on debt for $19 million tomorrow right. and built everybody right, right away, yes. yes. It would, it would be more than that. Of but if you do it, it over the course of three years. But that's years, not how we do it. We're planning to do this project for 13 years and to get help yeah. from the government to do it. Hopefully, help get help. Well, hopefully, if we had enough people working with us, 
even you know, and against us. Even if it voted, doesn't mean that you're going to get all that money. Of course it doesn't, but it and sure doesn't mean, we're definitely not going to get it if we don't appropriate, right? If we don't say, yes, we're committed, we are definitely not going to get the money. We might yeah. get the money if we say, this is serious, these are the items we need to address, and we move forward in a collective way to, to, to address the issues. Well, that, that's your opinion, but I don't see it that way. Okay. And, well, you know, your, your experience in this is, is no more than what I have. Of course and, not. And in the construction end of it, you know, I've dealt with this type of thing for many, many years, and I prove... But you have not built wastewater treatment plants, Kip. No, I haven't. So, but different, it's, it's apples and oranges. It's not different. It's the contract part of it. And, and Carolyn, you know exactly what went on with that roof. You had engineers that some of them were not selected by the taxpayers. They were selected by the state. Kip, everything was assigned for us. I and get you it. know we they were not I good. It. They were not good. Of course they weren't. And we don't but have that in this case. We can pick we can our engineers. We can pick our own engineers. We can pick the projects that we're going to do. We can split it up. We can phase it, it in. Phase it in. We, we, can, it. we yeah. can look at yeah. how we do we make this choices, affordable. All kinds of time. What the MVP program, or we're already trying to figure out how to put the sides of the tanks up and, and line it oh. under the MVP program and not be a taxpayer thing. I mean, well, there, you, you, you have, we have no options if people don't vote. You do the have debt. options. No, you have the options of you could, you could get a different type of headworks project that was a lot less expensive and more efficient. And as you go along, you don't Kip, even we have haven't even decided. We we're not even decided. there. You What's have that? no idea we what you're going to do. We cannot go even forward one step until people vote that we have the money. You, you could put in that uh, channel cleaner. It's not that much uh, money. It's a waste if you're going to pull it out. It's, why? If it works that well, you could use it in Old Deerfield. How do you know we're going to keep Old Deerfield as a plant? We haven't gotten that far, Kip. That could be a force main to, de to South Deerfield. Or go you up to Greenfield. You don't know what it's going to be. Or we're, to Greenfield. We're permitted in Deerfield I'm for 850,000 gallons. Okay, we cannot change that unless we increase the capacity of that plant. Now, the plans that I've saw does, doesn't do that. We have the ability, if we upgrade that plant, because we don't have anything designed yet, we have a choice to make that plant take everything in this town. And it would require force maining Old Deerfield here, but that's not even close to discussion yet. Right. Because we have I'm all that so, stuff to do. And that's what's scary, because people are saying, well, they, they have to understand that we're going to take our time and decide how this is going to be through committee, through people's discussion. It's not one person that's going to decide all we're going to do. You have to commit to get an appropriation to go forward. I understand. Once we have that, we can all sit together and decide what part, what phase, how much. And at 25% design, we can make a change and say, you know what, this is costing too much. This doesn't make sense. Other, other things have changed, other variables, we're going to make a change here. There's a lot of ways to do this project, and, it, and, and we're all going to decide that together, but we have to take the first step. So after you build your $6 million headworks project and you decide that the second phase is going to be too expensive, and then the engineer says, well, you can't downsize this because this headworks project can handle so much more. At 25% more. design, you're going you know. to decide your full, what you're going to do there. You have to do it all in concert in a phased way. I mean, yeah, I think, I think a lot you should of work listen to more than one said. engineer and get, and get a different perspective. We probably will, but we can't but listen you, you to anybody do it until we get it. Until you, you start asking people for this kind of Look, money. We had two firms come in and give us an assessment and what they felt needed to happen. We chose that one firm. We're moving forward with that plan. And we may change it. We may have third-party reviews come in and look at it. We okay. may pick a, a total different engineer from DPC to yep. do the whole project. None of that has been decided. Okay. So you have to you have to kind of start the ball rolling, and you know, working against the town to kind of get that rolling was very detrimental. Well, for, to pay for something. Well, there's a big difference, Kippy. You got to understand, and that's where a lot of people in town are getting the misunderstanding. We're just asking for a debt exclusion of the 19 million. We're not asking for an expenditure of $19 million. You, we already, have to, you already did that, David. All that, we did that for the million dollars. We haven't done it for the 19. What we have to oh, do. Wait, 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 wait. No, wait, I'm talking. No, you, be, you listen. I'm talking. What do you think right we now. did at the town meeting? We, I'm talking. You don't interrupt. Well, at the, at okay, the there's town. A, every step 
of that $19 million of the debt exclusion we're talking about has to be bid on. Every step of it. None of it can be done without bid. We don't even know what we're going to do yet. Okay? And the initial part, Kippy, is making sure we have the right engineer there. And that will have to go out to bid. It's not necessarily Dave Prickett. Right. It could be any one of the ones that are in the area. It could be Titan Bond. It could be Weston Sampson. It could be another one. We don't know that yet. We have to go out to bid. The town, the, the boards cannot expend that money without, actually, it all has to go to special town meeting. We're just asking for the debt exclusion right now, saying this is what this project's going to potentially cost as a debt exclusion, not an expenditure. There's a big difference, and the way it's being communicated to town, a lot of people think, okay, we're going to spend this money right away without any guidelines, and that's not true. It's we have to one. do everything step by step. We have to. There's no, no gray area in there, so Mike. it all has to go out. And the first step is making sure we have the right engineer, and that will be a bid process. And everything else after that will be a bid process to make sure that we have the right people. You know, this thing with the school roof, I understand that completely. I was against that pink company right from day one. But that was kind of forced down our throat. And, you know, thankfully, you know, people like yourself stepped up and straightened that crap out. They didn't even want us to have anybody over there looking at what they were doing. Never mind, you know. Okay, but you know so, it was a totally you know, different. It's just situation. making sure that we are doing things the right way, and you know, that's where I found on this big issue right now. There's a big difference between debt exclusion and expenditure, and a lot of people in town don't realize the difference because they're not given all the facts. <laughs> Okay. May, may I speak? Yes. At our annual town meeting, the people voted to appropriate $19 million. You're asking for a debt exclusion, so it will be up, up and above the proposition two and a half. So if our tax rate is frozen at $16, however much money this comes out to be, we'll be on top of that. It won't be counted as part of that. So by you already getting the appropriation of $19 million. And if you are successful at get a debt exclusion, yes, you can go out to bid. You do not need a special town meeting to sign that contract for bid. I'm still going to get after people. I want I, 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 the people I, I, to run all I, the way I, I, through. I, I, That's expending money versus appropriating. If you want to have an actual, a, a, a civil meeting here, everybody waits their turn, and then you, know, you interrupt. We're done. I'm the like chair. That. I can run the meeting how I want. So go ahead. So what I was saying is that you have the money appropriated. If you get the debt exclusion, you've got your $19 million. When you go out to hire an engineer, whoever it may be, you're right, you can go out to bid. You can hire Harry Connick Jr. And if he gives you a price of $3 million and you want to accept it, you can sign that contract because you got the appropriation and you got the debt exclusion. It doesn't have to go out. So what I'm saying is that why I feel it's important that this all gets ironed out before, because the voters in the town don't get any more say. This is their last hurrah. This is their last opportunity. Everything else has to be trusted by the taxpayers for you people. Well, 98% of the people at town meeting said that we trust you with that. Yeah, I'll, and that was about it, 98 people. 98% of the people said, go ahead. And I told them at that meeting that I was not going to spend any money on that project until I informed them every step of the way. We're going to get the appropriation, then we're going to put the committee together again to figure out exactly our process going forward, pick an engineer, pick a design, Go out to bid, hey, we got bids back, it's looking at about 19 million, I'm gonna keep people informed every step of the way because there's another whole plant that needs to get worked on. I'm not a narrow-minded person, I'm not just looking at one project. There's a lot to do in this community, there's all the pipes that are leaking. 
You know, all the I and I stuff that, you know, our, our pipes are old, they're busting everywhere. We pave a road and a water main goes. I mean, there's so much infrastructure that hasn't been done in town. We need to start addressing this stuff and we have to get off the ball and get moving. And we need that help from the federal government. And, you know. I'm not saying that things don't get need to be fixed and repaired and updated. What I'm saying is there's a different process and that I feel that you've put blinders onto it. That's my opinion. You might not we agree. We haven't done that's anything right. yet. Can't that's the process. It's, it's in the Nothing process. Nothing has on. been decided Even, except the clarifier. I right. went to town meeting that. for 19 million because I wanted to be clear with the people that this was the high end that we got for doing, this was like the high water mark. There's a, a large contingency in there because you never know when it's get funded, what's gonna happen, what you're gonna do first, tariffs, all the kinds of things that play into a, a large infrastructure project like this. You don't know what the final number is gonna be until all the bids come in. I've heard that 19 million for, for these two phases at this plant was a high water mark and we should probably be able to cover everything, hopefully less than that. So I said, well, I'm not gonna go and say it's gonna be 15 million, and then come back after all the bids come in and go, hmm, it's another three or another two. I said, 19 million is our watermark for doing this project. Then we're gonna educate you all the way through and try and figure out, can we get it done for less? What do we wanna do? Do we wanna bypass, you know, not worry about, just stay with the chlorine for an hour not change the aerators. I think there's a lot of ways to, to, to change that plant to be more energy efficient instead of just pulling the stuff out. There's all kinds of ways that we can improve that technology over 40 years. And um, we, we all have to decide together on that. We can't. Just, just squishing the sludge is gonna cut our operational costs. If you look at so our operation, many ways to fix it. If you look at the operational costs, you can pay for maybe the squisher. Whatever it is. Well, that's, that was my point exactly with that auger monster was one of those things because it compresses it, it decontaminates it, and you can put it in a dumpster. And that would get rid of 80% of your 90%. But it hasn't happened. But we haven't bought to, it to, yet. We haven't gone forward. That's one of the things that would get looked at in the design. A lot of things, you know, I don't know. I, I can't say what you think or not. But during one of the uh, public sessions, um, after we got the preliminary or draft assessment, uh, one of the en local engineers pointed out that in Mr. Prickett's report, there was $2 million allotted for the clarifier repair, but yet we appropriated a million dollars. When, we're when fixing he asked, one. We're fixing one instead I, of two. I, I know. So when he was pushed as why there's a million dollars difference, he said, well, because he used, you know, best practices and uh, you know bids from other people and all of these things. But he attached a figure, in this case, $140,000 roughly, to do this. And that $140,000 is coming out of that $1 million. If the repairs come in at $500,000, he still gets his $140,000. Which he really well, some, should no, get. Some of it he changed the contract to be I not to it. exceed five, and, and to bring down, you know, there was only five. so many meetings. And, and so there's a lot of risk he's taken on his part, too. It's not all just, and he, even just the, the USDA DA grant alone, he's $7,000 over. I mean, the point of this conversation was the fact that in his report, he put a $2 million price tag on something that we have now discovered is going to be under a million dollars. So is that $19 million, really $9 million? Well, was that, was that $2 well, maybe. million to do the whole clarifier versus just taking the guts I mean, out and putting the other one in? There's a lot of question. Yeah, exactly. Kip, Kip, I would hope, once we go out to bid, that yes, it will come in to less. Do, do I wish it will be $9 million instead of 19? Absolutely. But we don't even know what we're doing yet. Nothing's gone out to bid. Oh. So how are we supposed to know whether a lot we're, of we're, we wanted to be up front with people. I don't want to go in and tell people that it's going to be half the price and then go, have to ask for money again. We're trying to be overestimate what it's going to cost, and then we back into it, and hopefully it will come out and, and, we will, can be, break. and, and it will be cheap, cheaper. This Easy. whole thing started out as an assessment of what was going to be needed in there. And then all of a sudden it turned into a full-blown renovation of the entire place. Because it needs it. Because it, it revealed it. The re it revealed how bad it was. 
That's well, what it is. I mean, Kip, I brought you year over after to year after year. Yeah. We were told everything is fine down there. Everything is fine. Don't raise the sewer rates. Don't raise the sewer rates. I don't remember. I remember. Dave will remember. Year after year, we're sitting here. Oh, fantastic reports. So then we get a real assessment. Things are breaking right and left. They've their end of life. Their usage is done. And so it, we're, we're hoping that nothing will happen between now and when we get going on it. Because then we're in big trouble. I brought you both over to Sunderland to look at their plant. It's the same age as ours. And I, and I tried to explain to you how they deal with the same situations that we deal but with. Kip, it's again, it's thing. apples yeah. and oranges. How they so? have because a pump system at each pump. It, they have exactly. grinders that grind the stuff up so that by the time it gets to the plant, there is only this little stuff that you take out. Ours, ours is a gravitational feed system, so it just mm -hmm. flows down there, all kinds of crap in it. I don't know if Sunderland you should, you is catch better it it goes in people it. or what, Why? but people that here in Deerfield are putting in all kinds of stuff into the sewer system that shouldn't need to be in there. If they want, didn't want to spend $19 million instead of knocking on the doors, you should have told them, do not flush flushables, do not put your dental floss down, do not put t-shirts down there. This is what's causing the plant to, to implode. But we have nothing. Exactly. It, it goes down there, and then it's going out to the river if we don't intervene. Well, that's what I'm it's, saying. It's you not, need to it's put totally the channel different, cleaner in it's there. It's totally oh. different than Sunderland's. I, uh, all right. Well, and uh, just when you talk about the assessment, you know, the last time I was on the board, we, Weston Sampson actually gave a price of the whole system yep. at $36 million. I know. I read that too. A lot of the bids that are coming back for projects in the area or any anything, uh, they're coming back higher. A lot of the tariffs are are, are, are affecting a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm nervous that, that we're not going to be able to do the project. You know, I, I, we just don't know. I mean, it's too volatile right now to have a solid figure on what this is going to cost. I think we need to get moving on this thing so we can start to design and go out to bid and get some solid numbers for people. We're not. You the, know, I'm not going to spend any money until we know. Construction inflation is about 5%. So you can just add on 5% every, every time we delay. Well, if the economy goes south, the, the construction costs will go down. Well, that's true, well, too. I don't want to wish for that. Thanks. All right. Well, um, just as long as you keep us posted as to when that of information course. will come and back. And here again, just, you know, with any project, you know, we need oversight on it. And it's like, you know, here again, I'm going back to the school roof. If we hadn't had the oversight on that project, it would have hurt us a lot worse. And we've got to make sure on any project that we're doing in the town, especially with the amount of money we're talking here, mm -hmm. we've got to have the proper oversight. And to me, part of the proper oversight on any project we're doing is the clerk at work that's responsible to the town of Deerfield, not to the engineering firm. Kind and of like Kip, the highway garage? And Kip, we can do the same exact thing that we did for the roof. We can post it as a selectman's meeting. We can show up and we can make decisions that day, that minute. So when every time that they had presented something and it was a problem, what did we do? We voted and moved forward. We can do the same thing at those kind of meetings. But exactly, exactly, Carol, what you are saying now is what we should be doing now. Why put up the fight when we're in the middle of a hard situation when it can be prevented? We haven't and started Kip, anything yet. we haven't yet. started, Kip. Uh, I don't know how many times we've got to say it, oh, Kip. Kip. We have not gone out to engineer. We're not even at 10% or 5%. We have no plan. We have an assessment that we know what needs to get done. There was a rough figure, actually pretty well figured out budget for those two things. We stabbed at the largest number to say, look, I don't want to go any higher than this for these two things. Let's get appropriation from town. Then if we can get that to happen, let's debt exclude it because that's a smart thing to do is to pay it off, you know, and not put it on your tax bill for everybody. And then, um, and then let's sit down and figure out how we're going forward. But, you know, something you got to think about that too. I mean, you know, I understand the difference between the debt exclusion and the override. But for most of the people in town, that's a lifetime payment. It's 40 years, if not more, if you do multiple plans. So I mean, it's more if we don't get any grant money. Well, 
I mean, yeah. it just keeps going up I, the more we wait. I mean, it's just I get a it, lot of money. You I also, get it. Do, you, do you ever think about, and I had a good conversation three years ago with the people at MassWorks, and what you spoke of earlier is very important, that there's multiple communities bidding for the same pot of money. And what I remember the conversation at that time was, Deerfield has 880 users, and they were looking for three and a half million dollars. A town like Lowell was looking for five million dollars and they service 180,000 people. Where do you think the money goes? Well, and guess what, we Kip? We had a soft commitment. We Where had a soft commitment now? and guess what? We might have lost that commitment. Okay. That assessment, did they happen to notate a lifetime of what's left of life as they exist? Thank you. What segments Thank you. Things yeah. might break down? Um, they did, they did a level of scale, like they didn't put a timeline on it because it's pretty hard. A lot of this stuff is too old. To me, that might be helpful for folks in town for folks saying, hey, we might have five years left. Talk, talking to the, um, the man who runs the plant, he's worried about, you know, months. He's hoping to get through the winter. You know, and it, it's there's some really tough stuff. That's why in we, have to work, we have to, we're mandated to do the clarifier anyway. but. Right. The clarifier, you know, we, both of them are broken. But that's just something that I noticed wasn't stated tonight, which is a missing piece for folks that are watching, is what's our deadline based off of the professionals that are working with this equipment? What do they hope it will mm -hmm. last before we're real well, trouble? we're keeping our fingers crossed that it doesn't break. Yeah. That's basically it. Yeah. Um, can, Sharon's here. Do you mind if um, we can we just make oh, a motion and vote yes, for the um, oh, yes. yep, a second for the debt on the table exclusion right vote now. on correct. wastewater treatment plant upgrades for yes. September 9, 2019? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Thank you. Diana, tomorrow you will please get this off yes. to USDA and, and Dave Prickett. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Sharon, do you, want, do you have a moment? Sharon, I, I'm um, sorry to make you wait. That's okay. We, were we, we, we talked about the senior center like just before you walked in the door. Wow. Okay, I'm Sharon Pachurik. I'm part of South County Senior Center. And I um, came here tonight to ask a request for our seniors. Um, with the heat index the way it's been and um, this coming weekend, it's going to be over 100 degrees. And I see um, different areas uh, concerned about people. Um, I'm Absolutely. asking you to open our senior center for a cooling station. We have um, good AC in there. Um, today, the center was packed with people. That's what I was going to ask, how the, how the AC is functioning there. Is it decent enough? To yeah, and the rooms are pretty, pretty big. Um, yeah and the air conditioners are doing a good job at the moment. Okay. Um, my goal is to try to get some of my triad people to step up to the plate, help mm -hmm. man that station, uh, uh, the center for okay. the weekend. Um, but I need permission for you people mm -hmm. to open it. Um, and then um, I'm gonna be looking for uh, uh, some water donations kind mm -hmm. of things. Um, I think Triad will step up to the plate and provide some food in there okay. for them. Whether they sit, read a book, watch a movie, um, just um, socialize in general, it gets them out of their homes where it's so hot. We've mm -hmm. talked to air conditioners. Mm -hmm. I talked to a man today, because um, Triad has been getting some. Yep. Um, we've been working together in actually installing them in their homes because some of them are at that age where they can't do that anymore. Right. So um, I've got a group of people that are doing that, and that's a good thing. Um, some people refuse the AC units for various reasons. Run the um, electricity they're old school. And... They, they don't want to get into that situation, but they don't hesitate to come to the center. Okay. So that's a good thing. Um, and I'm trying to do more outreach uh, and 
on Friday is our biggest day at the center. Okay. So I hope to get some of this out there to them to let them know that they're welcome uh, with your approval to come in during mm -hmm. the weekend and cool down. Right. Um, Sharon, I talked to Christina and um, so I'm hoping the board will give us permission to do whatever, either yeah. purchase a couple, if, the, if it's truly just a couple people, they can, we can purchase small units so at least they can cool down. If, cause my concern is, you know, we've opened it up in the past and no one's come. So what, you know, cause you have to drive there and then drive back, you have to have a ride and everything. So when I talked to Christina, she's, she's not adverse. She's gonna try to figure out what the needs are for the people that would be most effective. Because if we open it up and no one comes, you're not serving anybody and we're spending a few couple hundred dollars maybe, to, you know, to run the place and to staff it. So if, if, if it's more effective to buy, if, if there's two or three people that don't have air conditioners at home, it's more effective to buy a couple units and lend them out. So what we need to do is figure out tomorrow what would be the most effective way to handle this for the profile of the town right now? Because you have had Triad buy some um, air conditioners. So as far as I know, the most vulnerable people so far have, have, do have their own units. So we, we need to figure out if this, which, which was the most practical way. I don't, I don't think any, either one of you have a problem it. with whatever we decide. Right. So let's work with Christina. Yeah, if we open it, it's fine. If we decide not to open it and, and make sure that a couple people have the air conditioning units like this person that you're talking about. Um, I, I just, I just want to make sure we're, whatever we do is the most effective because it's very, very important that people be safe. So I know there's many websites out there from different areas, police departments, fire departments, um, right. posting on the internet um, to watch out for your seniors, watch out yeah. for your neighbors, your elderly right. in general, and pets. And but a lot of going to be the worst, right? Now. Right, yeah. and yeah. but from what I, you know discussing it with other people, the problem is people have pets and they don't want to leave their pets. So they would rather stay home with their pets in their little air condition, you know, even if it's only one room, then come to the senior center and have their pets at home with no I nothing. understand that part. Um, yeah. Part so, of our outreach is when we go in and we bring food to those people, they would rather buy food for their pet mm -hmm and not buy right. as much as they need for their self. Yeah. So I understand them wanting to stay home. Right, and, so uh, I just, whatever whatever we can sort out tomorrow to be the most effective, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, for whatever. Yeah. Dave, you're, are you all set too? Yeah. Okay. But we would have to pay our senior center director if she opens that, and where yeah. would that money come from? Well, we have, it's, it's an emergency, in my mind, it's an emergency, we have backup a line item in the uh, Board of Health budget for um, a backup, you know, to, for Dick when he's not available. So that is a salary line, so we could pay out of there. And we also have a board expense line that we have for like when we send out the rabies heads or, you know, different things that we have to buy, you know, for Board of Health um, emergencies. So this again is an emergency in my mind. So if we have to use um, a, a couple hundred dollars to buy a couple units, air conditioning units to loan out. They would still be town of Deerfield units, but we would just loan them out to whoever doesn't have an air conditioner unit. That's fine too, in my mind. So we, we, we have flexibility, because we don't have time between now and Saturday to post a meeting to get Waitley and Sunderland to um, agree to pay for the senior center director. So doing it this way seems like you know, I mean, it's an emergency in my mind. That's just the way it I is. I guess they'd be on board with it. But yeah, but so we're yeah. just going to do it. Would and it wouldn't be all that much money. I mean, Christina, yeah, I know, for a um, day. Christina had messaged me and said she wanted to uh, talk to me tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, please keep us so, informed. So just so, I, 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 Maybe whatever we can get works. a consensus tomorrow because tomorrow's one of our biggest days yeah. at the Senior can Center. You, we're always reach packed. Out to us? Um, and we can get a feel from the people there. Right. Would you come? Mm -hmm. Would you want this right. service? I, th I think what we want to convey is we, we are uh, supportive of whatever is going to work the best, okay, and, and yeah, keep our, our people safe. Yeah, our concern is their safety regardless. Ab mm -hmm. ab absolutely. So mm -hmm. if you decide to open it up, 
that's fine. If you decide to have the units, that's fine. We'll, we'll figure out how to make it work. We just want to make sure the seniors are safe. And maybe we could, um, you know, I know we have a, a boo meeting coming up. I think it's on the 27th. We should probably talk about, you know, this subject. I think it's 29th. 29th, October. is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we, um, what we could do, what you'd want to do is put it on the agenda item for, you know, as a warming yes. center, as a warming center and a cooling yeah, center. Yeah, we have we, the same issues that. going on in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we buy yep. fuel oil and wood and even coal. Mm -hmm. People in this town use coal to this day, I know. And, and we help in, in that aspect too. Yeah, um, I know you. And, do a and lot. The, sometimes that's more effective than instead of getting people out to come to the right. senior um, center in the in the winter time. So I mean, it's the same thing. So people don't want to leave their animals. They don't feel safe coming out in the snow and the ice. Whatever. So if you put it on the agenda as just you know, in an emergency situation, you, okay. appropriation, um, I that think would be we, great. I think if we work together as a team, we can But for this out. weekend, for will this... Will this work or will that mm -hmm. work? Yeah. Right. Keep but for this loop. weekend, I just, you know, if you can sort it out tomorrow and the next day, whatever is... I just wanted to talk to you to make sure that... No, it's not know, a problem, Sharon. It I, is I'm available on. if that's what we need. And we can go from there. Yep. Okay, Good. so we will talk then. Yes, please keep us okay. in the loop. All right. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for no, all No, thank for you, Sharon. I really appreciate um, you taking the time to call. And, You're welcome. Um, you know, it's, it's good. And I just, Christina, I, taught, I had a good conversation with Christina. She just wasn't sure which way to go. Okay. But I told her we would authorize, if, she, if you guys did want to open it up, the senior center, we would this authorize is for... This first experience. With for Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I want to so. make sure it's Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. It's just not sad. I mean, yeah, Saturday is supposed to be the worst day, but Sunday too. Okay. Because you'll we'll open on Friday. We're we're open anyway on Friday. She's yes. already agreed to stay open till five o'clock on Friday. Oh. Okay. When my conversation with her. So it's it's just do we open on Saturday or do we make sure mm -hmm. everybody has a working air conditioner? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Um. I guess. Um, we don't have this on the agenda, but uh, Brian Atherton was here from Two Feathers to talk a bit about. This would be um, under business not anticipated. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where we're going. I'm not inclined to take any votes tonight because we don't, you know, it wasn't on the agenda. So, um, you know, we'll see. I'd yeah. love to hear what you have to say. I'm yeah, to so this uh, board. Brian Atherton, uh, my father's here from California. We're trying to get this uh, over two years worth of uh, discussion ended here, hopefully soon. Um, back in, uh, what was it November, I think it was, uh, so it'll be 2017, mm -hmm. I had uh, come to the town looking to find out what was needed to receive a class two license. And at that time, uh, I know David, you weren't on the board, and so we proceeded from there um, through two different efforts. I was sent to ZBA and planning board um, several times. We've had discussion here. There was, um, there has been up until this year, uh, licenses issued. However, the way they've been issued, I've been notified by the state. You can't put the, it's a, class two was a vehicle license uh, used car license, uh, essentially, whereas the class one's a new dealership license, which we're not a new dealership. That's for an automotive with like Ford or Chrysler. Mm -hmm. So our focus is the RV industry. That's our primary focus, right? Um, but we need to have the proper plates in order to transport trailers or do repairs and such of that nature. And unfortunately, the way um, things are set up in the Commonwealth things don't cross over well for the RV side of things for getting plates. So I've worked with um, kind of a friend of mine who has a dealership who just retired and uh, kind of worked off of him a little bit and what he's done. So the state leaves it up to the select board to issue the licensing. And of course, being the first one in town, been the guinea pig in this case. And so it's been a learning experience for all of well, us. That's the first class too for RV type situation. So um, the license was issued. Originally, um, I had come to town and, and um, things were stated in our um, 
paperwork when we're setting up the property and everything one way. Some of the wording was vehicles, some of the wording was trailers. And so that was the reason why I sent back to the planning board and ZBA. Um, and initially all of that was clarified. They're okay with the use car licensing. They saw no issues. Um, it was then sent back a second time. ZBA clarified again. Um, one individual on the board had been the one who had asked that I go back to these boards. Um, there's been several uh, personal issues with that individual. And in fact, along the process, there's been statements made that I'm required to have oil water separators, I'm required to have uh, repair facilities on premises. None of that exists in mass law. Um, so it's just been an ongoing situation. I'm wanting it resolved. It's over two years of lost sales. Um, all I can do right now is consignment. Um, we have 11 approved parking spots for sales, period. Um, so it was left last that um, to go back to the planning board. The planning board was then convinced that I need to go through their whole entire process all over again and to propose a whole new site plan. Well, that would compromise my existing business because the individual we have a board of ethics issue with and that is waiting to go through the system with my contractor. Um, and so that's been a problem. And it's been documented on video, just as we're on video now. Um, uh, for example, at the ZBA meeting last April, not this April, but the previous April, where um, he tries state bylaws that don't exist in town, for example. Um, I don't always catch these things. I'm a rookie. I'm not one of you guys. Uh, the state does require that you guys are aware of what needs to be, not me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trusting you guys as officials, and uh, it's a learning process for myself. Um, so I've learned a lot going through this. But what I do know is what we would like to do is sell. That's part of a business. We're losing the opportunity to go purchase something from an auction, for example. And that's what the problem is right now is the license says I can only sell trailers. Well, it's a used vehicle license. You go to an auction house, I cannot even buy a trailer. They won't even issue me a, a card to even buy anything because they're looking at this. This is not even a legal license, and that's what I brought to the board the last time we had a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a hodgepodge. It's a problem. Um, and it's kind of a tough thing how to resolve this issue. So um, <clears throat> just from my limited experience remembering this, um, when you came to the town for a business, it was to repair RVs, and a lot of them were even pulled behind trailers. So Correct. The permit and what you were asking for was 11 spots, 11 or 12 spots, um, to have RVs and trailers. And I think since then, you've changed the way you'd like to do business, and you'd like to do use cars, or at least be able to buy a car, put it on the lot, or buy a truck to tow a trailer buy a motored RV, I, I'm not really sure of the business, but I know that you'd like to have a, um, like to have a used car dealership yeah. now, either use it for the spot for a trailer or for a car. But I think that, and I don't know the laws as well, that's why I said I'd like to really have council look at this, but yep. um, from what I was, had been told that um, we had maybe, you know, I don't know if the, I think when we, gave you that class two, it had conditions on it. And that had right. the, and whether that's accurate or it's the right thing to do or not. They're I'm not, saying not. Uh, yeah. Right, so I'm not, I'm not completely sure on what transpired in the past, but I, I understand what you're looking for now. Right. I just don't know, you know, and I've been told that if you wanna do that, you have to go through the planning board and, and say this is the site plan, this is what I'd like to do and get approval from them and then I don't know if you'd have to go to ZBA or not, but I think, and then that would come back to us with their approval and we could give the license. But right. I don't have a, I'm not a bit yep. of a rookie like you. I'm not exact, yeah. uh, exactly sure. sure. Um, so I would love to just write down or get on paper today what you're really looking for, um, yeah. what can be done, find out from our attorneys truly what you need to have, yep. what, what steps we need to provide, 
and move that forward for you. I mean, yeah. I'd love to help you. I just want to do it correctly. Yeah. So. In this exact discussion, believe it or not, we've already had, mm -hmm. and it was already supposed to have gone to the lawyers. Yeah. And that and it, is. And it did, I and think. And fact. I never heard back from oh. the lawyer aspect of it. Um, what now, did we hear? her and I had spoken in the office about this discussion. I know there was a clarification on the verbiage that mm -hmm. was typed yeah. up. Uh, a trailer is considered, considered a vehicle in Massachusetts. Um, okay. So that was clarified. Um, so either way, that still falls underneath so, that terminology. I, so we have had some clarification. Right. Um, as far as the parking, I originally came in at 15. We have 11. Okay. Um, so that's a clarification on yeah. that. I did go through ZBA. ZBA has clarified it twice mm -hmm. and has been okayed with it twice. Being a used car dealer. I can go to the whole thing as a used car lot if I chose to. Mm -hmm. The original application, before I knew all these other fine details, when I went to the um, inspection office, which Dick is in charge, mm -hmm. at least at that time, and then we had Kyle mm -hmm. as the inspector. Mm -hmm. um, they had come back to the town, to you guys, you folks, and had in informed you folks as well that you can't put a restriction on it. Mm -hmm. um, so that confirmed what when I had contacted the state about say, hey, what's going on based off of what the auction houses had told me. Um, so can I just interrupt one second? So, so f number one, you're asking for just a class two license with no restrictions. Exactly, because okay. that way I can sell a motor home. Right now I have stuff on consignments. They're motor homes. I'm allowed to do that right now as it sits. I don't make the money that I could. The town misses out on the sales tax, period. Mm -hmm. That what? is allowed according to the state as I operate. So the okay. difference is, is that now I can go purchase and make sales tax, which brings you guys revenue. Can you just read what our restrictions are right now? Let, give me a second here. I kind of organized. I've got, because I do have it, the dealer's bond, which is required for class two. And I'll get into that a little bit because we're kind of on a time frame with them as well. I know this is, you're talking about the stuff I gave you guys a long time ago, right? Yeah, I know, currently but there, I don't think there is currently a class two issued for this, for this year. Correct. For this year, we withheld it until the clarification with the lawyers. His correct. other one, right? right. That was yes, the idea, correct. if I remember yeah. right. Um, it basically said that he couldn't sell. So this is last year's vehicles. license. It, <laughs> you want me to read off what was on the, la yes, the previous I just, ones? Um, I just, I let's see. Just, Revised for 3-1 of 18. It says, uh, for the class two used vehicle. The most recent verbation there is license restricted to not more than 10 vehicles. So here we have vehicles, correct? No selling of used cars. So it's contradicting the same statement other than the site address of being 707 Greenfield Road. So okay. you're saying I can buy a vehicle, 10 vehicles, but yet I can't sell them. Can't sell cars, right. right? Well, well, I think you know what, what Brian's mentioned and, and what was confusing is that originally when um, I, I think I understand that yeah. he was given, when he went in front of zoning and planning, um, his, his plan, his business plan at the time, too, had to more to do with the trailers. Sure. And his focus had been on, and, 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 and the interior of the trailers, Correct. too. Fitting, is outfitting them. Right. Outfitting yep. exactly. them. So I think, you know, subsequent to that, Brian's recognized that in order to move those trailers around, he has to have cars sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I think also it has come... It, because he, he said is at the outset of his business, um, it became more clear there is being a distinction made between the trailer and the motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. right. Because the motor vehicle has an engine right. and a trailer does not. So I yeah. think that's where the planet, the last time I talked to John Way about this, you know, we did review the, the original planning documents that were provided and and John did feel that there was language in there that said motor vehicle, or vehicle, I believe, and there was language that said trailer. Um, but he felt that when they looked at it, they were, were doing it under the impression that it was going to be the interior of trailers. the trailers. That's what I was so that if it is right. going to require engines, motor, you know, vehicle right. engines being kept on the site that are going to be in states of repair, <laughs> or if they're going to be bought and sold, the planning board may look at that differently than right. how they had looked at the trailers. So that's your original paperwork. So when I came back to the board and here we are wanting to be able to sell, let's say a motor home mm -hmm. or like um, what was brought to my attention by the inspection board is you're coming to visit me. You want to buy 
a trailer. Well, you need a tow vehicle. Well, I should be able to go to the auction, get you a tow vehicle, or have a couple tow vehicles on site mm -hmm. for sale, potentially. So mm -hmm. that was a good point, because it all ties together. Yeah. Um, I've been approached by Mercedes to do upfits. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be able to go down to Hartford, pick up that vehicle, and come back. Well, that requires a plate. I have to have a dealer plate for that. So it crosses over in, in many different ways, not just a repair plate. Mm -hmm. I can only use a repair plate if I'm actually performing a repair on it. Versus I cannot no use a repair plate on a trailer, only a vehicle. Yeah. And that complicates everything. Mm -hmm. The fact is I only have 11 spots designated. Yeah. So it's not like you're having another giant car dealership or anything like that. But how many vehicles, so, so Brian, when I went by today, I mean, there are vehicles and trailers and different styles and types, yep. you know, all over the lot. Yep. Do you have 11 or less currently on the lot, or do you, because I, I didn't have count. I have four on the were... front line that are on consignment. My dad's here visiting from California, so he has a right to be on the property as a property owner. Um, so, He's not trying to sell your trailer. So I'm not trying to sell his car or, tr uh, or his trailer. Um, so yes, we're under 11 okay. on the property I just, at I just this think, point. I just, you know, and because I, I think that's it too. They're all in sort of, they're all different types of vehicles. There's all so types in there, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we also have the employee vehicles right. there too, yes. Yeah. And they typically park towards the road. Mm -hmm. That's where I liked them, the park. Yeah. So what, um, I know we were concerned as a board that um, he, did, he did not do motor vehicle repairs Correct. because he right. did not right. have an oil separator. Correct. Correct. So um, what did the lawyer say? I mean, there has been some, I when, mean, if we paid the bill for it, then it must, there had to be some. When you have the automotive repair, when you guys required me in one of the statements that I had a contract, that actually is a violation of mass law. What does state is, and that's where it was clarified by somebody, where when you have this bond right here, that is where you come and buy a vehicle and there's a problem. This covers you as the buyer. So that allows you to take that vehicle to any repair facility of your choice to get it repaired. So that's why I had to pay for this bond and maintain it. Now, I've had also maintain insurance every year. I have until December to renew that, and it's continuously gone up because they believe I'm running a fraud operation because I have failed to report any used car sales mm -hmm. because it's required in Massachusetts that I document any and all automotive sales where I own the vehicle and sell it. And that right now, mm -hmm. in two years and, what, two months, zero sales so that's a problem for me diana do you do what did lisa say well so i think the the issue though carolyn so there's two separate issues yeah, here really is. the used car dealer license is pretty straightforward the issue is that what the you have to ask yourself if he if he if you're giving a used car dealer license is that in your zoning bylaw indicating that he has a motor vehicle repair or sales shop because that's what is the factor what would have to be you know what i'm saying like if you if if he isn't going to be doing any motor vehicle repairs on the site and to have a class two you don't have to do the repairs there Correct. like he said you just have to have a bond to show you're going to be able to get the repairs done um, but if he is doing repairs there, it's meaningful to the town in terms of your zoning, is what right. I'm saying. Right. So <laughs> how did Lisa suggest, have a suggestion that we, how we verify, or how do, can we issue the license? Is I it a license with I, a condition by saying there's no repairs there? Is that not valid? No, I think no. that, that what, they, what council recommended was that, that, that Mr. Atherton go back in front of the planning board and that there be clarity on if this is a motor vehicle repair shop or if it's a retail sale shop or that it be clear. And what he, Mr. Atherton, I think is saying is he prefer not to do that. But well, no, that's we, we what, did. But the individual that I have a conflict was with had convinced them otherwise where a whole entire new site plan review would have to happen. Well, I think maybe um, I would schedule a meeting with the planning board, sit before them. If there is an ethics issue that 
individual would have to recuse himself. Possibly. It was requested, and they refused to recuse well, himself that evening. You could talk with ethics about that, but I'm not really. Sh I'm not a lawyer. So, yeah. anyways, <laughs> um, but then I would have them get some clear. You know, bring your case before them. Say sure. this is what I'm looking to do. Uh, you know, I'm in support of you having a business in town. I just want to do oh, it yeah, legally and correctly, and I don't want to bypass the, um, you know, the rights of a planning board to assess that. So right. I'm, I'm hesitant to just go, yes, you're all set I with a class I think two. what we'd have to look at, because it's been so long, is the first time I went there, is to review if this was already stated then. I don't know, it's been so long, but it could have been that that was clarified then and already approved. They're, you well, guys I, would have received well, an email well, from I, them? I think that's part of the problem. I think in the original, I mean, we have, I have this in a folder somewhere. I don't yeah. have it for tonight because it that's was fine. on the agenda. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Um, but I believe the original planning condition, planning board conditions included something that said there would be no motor vehicle repair. Right. So that they would have, there would the trailers, the interior mm -hmm. trailers could be repaired. And there were Correct. certain things that could be done in front of the fence and behind the fence and all of that. Yeah. But I believe it said there would be no it maybe said engine repairs or it said something that indicated okay. there but wouldn't well, be you know, any but it doesn't do any good to have him go repairs. to the planning board to just state that he's still not doing any engine repairs what i need to know is how do we issue this class 2 license with no with the condition that there is no motor vehicle repair i'm not sure you can. and and here it again would be a violation you know, of the let, license let, let me if I was. Yeah. just ahead, you know Somehow this thing got all screwed up. I agree. <laughs> um, as far as I'm concerned, as long as it's a properly zoned area for commercial, mm -hmm. anybody and their brother knows that if you have a class two dealer's license, you're going to be repairing something. Yeah, you know, we're repairing it, the bodies. It, yep. Yeah, because, yep. you know. Um, so we don't there we isn't don't a used car out there that somebody hasn't repaired right so one of the good things is there's a couple different shops that we can have any mechanicals done because we have people call us all the time can you do a brake job on a motorhome can yeah. you do an oil change we turn them away we can't we have too much other work to do we're booked out over a year on yeah. certain types of work so you know it, I just you know because at the same point the state can stop in at any given time if they catch you doing an oil change they're shutting your they're shutting you down and finding you yeah because you're operating illegally. Yeah. So, you know, it's... Uh, but it is But it is to have a higher impact. I, I'm not quite sure where you're, getting, where you're going, David, but I think what, di what he's I saying is they might not do repairs on site, and you say they probably will at some point, but I'm saying they may have used cars just sitting on the lot that are in different states of disrepair. Well, in, that, in... Right? You know, here again, that's up to the town to monitor that, you know, you don't, you're not loaded up with unregistered motor vehicles just sitting there. Yep. You know, if they're for sale, that's one thing. You know, we had a resident that had all kinds of stuff around his house at one time. Sure. Yeah. And he declared that he was having a tag sale, and he just put tags on everything. <laughs> well, and, well, you know. On the, um, <laughs> on the class, cool. too, you can restrict the amount of vehicles. Yeah, and so, vehicles. you know, there's, there's some things that I just think. Well, like even now, when we have a consignment, you re we require a copy of their driver's license, yeah. current registration, and their title in it's, order for it to be on our property. Yeah. That's our insurance requirement. You know, pretty it's, simple. You know, my personal opinion, I think, you know, somehow we just got way too restrictive on this thing and prohibiting somebody from doing lost, a legitimate business in town. You know, the sales tax doesn't come to the town, it goes to the state, well, so, but. Um, well, I don't think that we've, we've necessarily restricted it. I just don't think we have clarification yeah. on whether the use has been. Um, Changed. Yeah. Right, has actually been approved. It's further down the road, you have the farm that has just cars sitting out front. That gentleman doesn't do anything on site. He just sells them and he has a fruit stand. You know, it's the yeah. same concept as what we would be yeah, doing. But, you know, here again, you know, He's also selling tractors, harrows, yes. yep. and everything else. And when that license came before the board, we approved it knowing full well that was going to be happening. Yep. And I was not, on the board when that happened. Is zoned for yep. that? Is it is zoned. It oh. used to be Tyler Roofing. It was a commercial zone. Oh, okay. Yep. Same as and there was also the understanding they may do some repairs in the building there. Yep. And we approved it as a board. Yeah. So... 
So Dave, so what are we supposed to so do? I'm we just, just issue this? No, I would like to get some, just I, run it by council, we'll get, a, run it get by a full council and stuff. Make sure that we're not doing anything, uh, you know, in three years, laws change, but sure. it's just. Um, just make sure we're doing I, it right. I just want to make sure we're doing it right because, you know, I think in a lot of ways, we're prohibiting somebody from doing business in town. Yes. It's not like, you know. I agree. He's doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. I agree. He's just trying to run a business. Yeah. And the class two gives him the right to have a dealer's plate, which he needs to run his business properly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why we're holding up, uh, you know, I think. I mean, I and don't know. the state allows any property owner, including myself, having a commercial. I can sell three vehicles a year before you need a license for it. You know, and it's like, gosh, you know, it's like, why is it so long of a period of time I, I was under difficulty the, but i was going to go into auctions and things like that and be able to pick up vehicles so you need yeah, a deal it's it's for that. it's just yeah. one of the many points that yeah. was brought to me by the inspection yeah. office that was a great point yeah. if i'm going to help a customer come into the door and you or, or somebody in this town because i'm starting to get some more local business where most of my business is two hours plus away um but now we're starting to have more local because people see we exist at that location and can can you get this small trailer or or now what's really popular is these sprinter van upgrades that we're doing we just did a tortilla truck that's well known in this area and put cooling fans for them mm -hmm. um and so a lot of people want to do these little tiny house like mentalities and these van conversions you know yeah, the hippie mm -hmm. age is back Seen them. so it's can i go to the auction and grab it absolutely you know coming from an automotive background being a master technician okay, I know what I'm looking for, go down to Connecticut, grab it, I've got a 20-foot flatbed, go grab a car for that folk, you know. Or let's go to um, the RV auction, we can repair that trailer and sell it. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the situation, but you know, the individual that's in charge of that department had a great idea, do not restrict yourself. Not knowing at the time what we were talking about doing at the time wasn't even proper, but now we know better that we can't do that. But at that point, um, yeah, don't restrict yourself. If you restrict yourself, you're locking yourself into something. Mm -hmm. So let's, I, let's, I was let's just go to the 31st. Put yeah. him on the agenda for the 30, 31st. We'll get an answer on this. Get, I, I was under answer. the impression if you were doing this kind of work, the planning board needed to look at it, needed to look at, right. and then there was some oil stuff, drainage. I, I'm not really, I'm not in the planning board. I don't really no, understand okay. all the needs. So I just want to get some clarification that what we would be supplying is accurate and lawful and. Any time you, you, you deal with anything based with fluids, oil, coolant, any of that, you have to have a device called an oil water separator, mm -hmm. which that drain has to be under that vehicle. So that way it doesn't contaminate the concrete or mm -hmm. the soil underneath. You know, I'm in, I've been around the environmental side of things for a long time. And that's one reason we don't want to touch it. We have so much other stuff going on that we have no time for that. Mm -hmm. But like companies like Brown Motors and Greenfield, they've got a facility that can handle big vehicles. Mm -hmm. One of my employees is a former employee there. And he says, oh yeah, we used to have big stuff coming in the back door there all the time and they can do front end alignments and this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. The bottom line is, and it was brought up in the past, okay, you have vehicles there, they've got to be inspected. What if they fail? But that's where that bond came in. That's where mm -hmm. you clarify, that's the bond. You get to take that vehicle that you purchased to anywhere you need. Just as much as you have something on consignment right now, mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for it. You are, I'm just facilitating your sale. But I make it clear to that person the same scenario. The yep. lemon law comes into play. You can go anywhere for repairs and that seller is responsible. To pay the bill. To pay that bill. And they can't direct you where to go. You know, you okay. got to have that safety first. So we'll get some clarification and we'll get you on for the 31st. 31st of this month. Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll be okay. around that day. Very good. Yep. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, let's see. We had two. Oh. Uh, M.A. M.A. Come on up. I'm and, sorry. and David. Oh, I don't know. How I are didn't you? mean to point if anyone else was. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Come on up, David. <laughs> sorry. Come on. How are you? And this is, I, we had talked You guys got to introduce yourselves. Because <laughs> you're on TV. Welcome. How do you? 
M.A. Swedland from the Energy Committee, and Steve Eifer is also on our, it's, it's not really a subcommittee, it's a committee to deal, we, we are members along with Diana uh, of the committee to develop solar on the landfill. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve Eifer wasn't able to make it tonight, okay. um, but, and uh, the purpose of this meeting, and I came and talked to you a couple weeks ago, um, was to just sort of fill you in as to where we were after a year of struggling mm -hmm. with this. Um, I think it's been just about, well, it's been more than a year since we started talking and we've uh, done an RFP. We hired, we got a grant to hire Beth Greenblatt to oversee the project. Um, we had six, I don't know, 15, 17 bidders. Oh, originally, yeah. yeah originally, six finalists, yeah, six um, finalists. Come in in November, they toured the site. Um, everything was pretty hunky dory. And, and then since it is an RFP process, we in open session can't really totally tell you everything because mm -hmm. we've been making some decisions, but um, that would probably have to be an executive session. Right. We're just okay. going to do kind of an update on yeah, where we're at. Yeah, this is just the broad swath picture. We've gotten the, closer, I think, a little. Yeah. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, um, so anyhow, the, the SMART program filled up in one day. You, the state, do you know what that means? I, uh, I would not know what that Yeah, go ahead, because okay. uh, the that's, audience does yeah. it All right, well. that's true. Um, and I'll be the audience. I don't know what it means. The state is, has been offering incentive programs for solar development, and the SMART program was one invocation of that, of um, a set of criteria that were described to us in blocks of incentive blocks. Yep. And if you got in early, uh, theoretically, you would be in the first block, would get the highest incentives, and the idea was that they would taper off 4% per block so that um, the state wouldn't be sponsoring something that didn't need incentives. If, if people wanted to do it at the lower levels, then they could have it. Um, the first day it opened, there were enough bids to fill all the blocks. All eight blocks. And municipalities got nailed because our RFP process can't be done on it in a week. <laughs> right. So we've certainly made known that we would like to have a cutout of it's the, the criteria is how much um, productive capacity can the Wamiko, uh, uh, the Western Mass portion of Eversource, accept, and there's a certain threshold for each block of how much was allotted for solar development, and that's what got filled. And municipalities have this difficulty of being too damn slow because a private developer could come in and say, <coughs> "Yeah, we'll do that," and they're right. making their bid that day. And for us, because it had to go through the RFP, I'm not going to say that we, but we really got hammered. Um, the incentives are way down from where we could have been if we didn't have to do that. So the state recognizes that they're working on it, and and we're hoping that the next iteration of the Smart Program, Smart 2.0, I think they're calling it is going to have some extra incentives and maybe cutouts of, of capacity for muni municipalities right. just so they I, don't have to compete with people who don't have to go through this process. I, when and I was at the state house, I did complain about that. Mm. And, and Thank you. I, no, it just, um, I complained about it and, and I said, you know, we, we have been trying to build on the landfill for years. And I said, you know, to me, it makes so much more sense to have it built on the landfill than to, you right, know, so to cover up all farm. these fields. Right. Right. One of the, well, that's what one I was going to ask. Outcomes of that appears to be mm. that in this next iteration, 
the state is giving extra, they call, they're calling right. their, the blocks, and then there are tranches right. mm. of incentives for specific yeah. things like building on a brownfield. Brown field. Yes. Right. Perfect. And, and That's building on a landfill is like the best. <laughs> and they, they want to encourage those. So they're, they're adding that, they're probably beefing it up. When do they're, you think that will take place? They'll be beefing it up Pretty because serious. they don't want forest land and agricultural land. Yeah, makes sense um, completely. Used for Eternal. solar. Right. So that, that could be a positive for us this right. time. Yes. But the timing is the hard part. We're, at the point where we select a proposal, um, so that we, you know, the, the state was going to have something for us in January, then March, then April. I heard, then, I heard August. June. I heard August. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, we heard, <laughs> and then we heard March. And there's July. still, <laughs> and that, and that, you know, middle of July, it's still nothing. I know. No, but I was and, told August. I yeah. was told Yeah, so now maybe August. August, but I mean, yeah. do we believe that one more than March? But are we prepared uh, to pounce when the thing comes well, out? That's the, your the question. Problem, That's why the we're problem here. is mm. we're running into the back end of this. The problem is... Um, we need to have, uh, we need to go through the process of permitting with Eversource and with DEP. And none of that can happen, or at least at this point in time, it's not likely to happen until we offer the, offer uh, the, you know, the, the proposal, we, the, until we have right. contract. Make, make, make a project. Make our yeah. pick, mm -hmm. sign a contract. So, if we don't do that soon, then, then we start running into the backside of the federal 30% uh, credit going down to 26%. And so- I'll translate. Yeah, go <laughs> ahead, yeah. Tra help. At the end of this year, uh, federal tax credit drops considerably. And if people haven't purchased 5% of the capital, you know, the actual panels and things that they're gonna put on our site by the end of the year, they can't get that credit. It'll go down 12%. Do you think 12%. politically that'll change after, you know, hypothetically um, a different administration comes in federally? Um, I foresee um, major investment in solar and incentive. But that's. 2020. I mean, it'll no, be, well, actually 2021. It'll be, it'll be 2021, 2021, probably 22. It's not their highest. You know, yeah. It won't happen on and, day one. And it's so, not the end of the world. Right. It, it drops 12% from, well, I forget what percent it is now. It's 30% it now. And it drops, and it'll, you it'll, lose 12% of that 30%. But so, it's, it's, again, if you're talking about <clears throat> a six or seven million dollar project, it's that's that's not well. That's what I'm change. saying. I mean, it takes a long time to get stuff done. Would we want to wait for a more favorable federal program? No. No. <laughs> no. Well, we'd lose. We the, want, I mean, well, why not the, though? I'm just big, I'm playing yeah, devil's no, advocate. No, why not? You, I'm with you. Valid question. Um, it is a very valid question. It is uh, for the whole process. I mean, part of it is we're a little invested in this RFP now. If we, yeah. If we didn't let them go to work, the other. The, the biggest difficulty is there's a limited capacity. I mean, there's only so much electricity that's needed in Western Mass. And if that, you know, the solar supply gets maxed out in that year, um, then we can't build it all. And the other difficulty with waiting is A, we don't know who's gonna get elected, really. Of course. And B, um, the, the um, tax incentive drops, uh, some of our bidders may not make it if without that incentive. They may pull out and we'd be back to zero. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be a lot better if we could just get in the queue soon. And the, the biggest factor is any year it's not built, we're not getting the income from it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's no, I our, get that. our I know. I biggest was just trying risk to figure is, is if there was going to be a delay. The, 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 
The SMART, pro the SMART program is, the, the state incentive program, is less than the SREC program. It was before, yeah. Right. The one, that SREC program is SREC 2. It was much more than SREC 1. Right, so, so, so the trend is going the other way. <laughs> but why is that, though? I mean, there's plenty of need for it, it's solar. It's because I mean, the, you, uh, well, you know, hesita yeah, hesitate to throw stones or anything, but I think the utilities are fighting back. They, they, they are. They are, and there's a double problem. The, the utilities are, A, you know, just need a certain amount of demand on their equipment to right. function, mm -hmm. to get paid. Right. The other difficulty is that Wamiko anyway, is in the, the solar, solar development business. business. <laughs> yeah. So they're competing. They're developing. They're the solar. gatekeepers right. and competition, right. which is a bad yeah. incentive. So yeah, it seems like and, the whole and they're aren't up. they aren't they required or aren't they go they they have a goal of creating so much solar well, themselves no, right don't they are required right, required right. they don't right. love, right. they don't that love it right but there mm. there's a goal right there's yeah. some requirement yeah, there is that a they state. have to have mm. a certain amount so what's going to take there's quite a few and how do we Quite a few. Uh, in the Berkshire, in the Berkshires, a couple have. When I was well, Greenfield, Lexington, was Greenfield, I but Green, Greenfield did theirs a long time ago. Yeah, and yeah. it was a whole different deal. They, yeah. they, they got. Know. They were one of the first. It's a ones. totally different agreement. I've seen when I was at DEP this winter. I was talking to a woman, and you just there's a whole thick, you know, promotional desk there of all the brownfield <laughs> solar stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure there's quite a few. Well, yeah, we I mean, some, of, some out, of the people bidding on our landfill have developed other landfills. Okay. <laughs> like right. In right. Lexington so, and Eastern so, yeah. so what do you guys are suggest what would you recommend? Because Well, well I ahead. think why we're here. We just wanted to bring you up to speak. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, to say and that just be public about what There we're will be a decision coming. Um, and and we're a little torn because it, it appears, and I'm trying to be vague about this because it is an executive <laughs> session. Right. But, yeah, well, vague it up, David, vague it up. Why don't we just, there's, you don't there's, have to. Um, there will be a choice to be made. Mm -hmm. and, and there is, um, at, the, at the moment, in our RFP process, we just granted an extra two weeks to everybody because there was an extra incentive that the DOER is likely, we've gotten all these rumors of what's likely to be in SMART 2, and we're having a final round of bidding based on the f actual financial side. We, we've already done, gone through an RFP thing, and Beth arranged where you rate how you feel they are mm -hmm. on the non-financial. You know, is it a strong company? Is it likely to yep. do the job right? We've done that, and we're waiting to have something to bid on that they couldn't possibly give accurate financial bids Makes when sense. they don't know what, know the, what the program is. is. We've, yeah. we've asked so, basically for final and best for both based on equal footing, basically. Right. So, so we can compare. So there's comparable data, mm -hmm. but it's not actual data. Right, because you don't have the same yet. No, yeah. but, but, but we're sort of... We're getting closer so, to uh, once we guess, once we guess, have right. um, I think we said July 31st Correct. they have to respond and within a few days of that we will try to be making some sort of recommendation to you and you hopefully will be <laughs> able to leap right in and say we want this one because I, I think, there's I think a the true rush. There's well, a true reason to rush. We could lose them all Is there if they lose their incentive. I, I, I do think that that, the, the I mean, I, we were promised like the 31st or, you know, the end of the month or the beginning of August. So I do think... It is important to pursue it because yes. I think we, we just. I mean, don't I, think I, I mean, I think it was. De I th I'm not sure exactly. I could not tell you why it was delayed, but there it seemed like there was multiple reasons it was Beth delayed. Beth Greenblatt expressed several things that had nothing yeah. to do with this. They had, 
They were working on the biomass thing. They're working yes. on this. They're working right. on that. That hadn't been change of staff. Right. Change yeah. of, didn't they have a change of staff? But is there any opportunity for an executive session on the 31st to get us a little bit more you know, clear you know, on this? Uh, I think we should wait until we get there ready to give you the recommendation. Then we would have. You then know, we meeting. could have an executive session because yeah. yeah. I would like to gonna, be able to get we, a little bit more in-depth well, info. At that point, it might not need to be executive session. Oh, correct. Well, yeah. Whenever. Yeah. I mean, the 31st. We're close to. Because, you know, Katie T, I can't ever say her last name, she's been promoted. She's the secretary uh -huh. now, so of, and she's worked with us for the MVP program from the very beginning. Now she's secretary of EEOA. So I, I feel of like she, she's grew up in Conway. Of, she's, oh, she's oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So Climate Katie. Yeah, she's wicked. Nice. <laughs> um, so they call her. But she, um, I think if we called her up, you know, if we, we go ahead for the 31st, we have you, have you guys show up for the 31st. Well, we need to actually look. If they come yeah. in on the 31st, we need a minute yeah. to look okay. at, yeah, yeah. at what well, the financial and, proposals and are. Really what I just want to update you on tonight is on November 4th last year, they opened the smart thing to bidding, or October 4th. No, it was November. It was a 4th. It was, a <laughs> it was November. And that day. It filled it up. I mean, they were expecting one block at a time, right. and the whole thing filled Didn't up. Didn't they expect because it to really go over like weeks? Really I mean, that they expected it to be ready. like but a every, week, so not like a day. We're not in line. So we need to get our landfill in the queue for approval <laughs> and so, so on. So it happens all, again when it opens up. So, so you, if you if it if you do you couldn't come on the thirty first, the evening of the thirty first. Uh, if you if you open this up, it depends on, on when they come in. I mean, See, in other words, no, usually no, the no. way it's been it's happening, time. Beth would receive yes. the things yeah. and yeah. translate them for yeah. us. Yeah, there's an analysis required, and and we I think you know we want to make sure we do our good due diligence yeah. so we can come to you and be educated and I think I don't but I, I appreciate that rushed. you want to do it right away well, I mean, yeah. I kind of worried that we're yeah. gonna miss the yeah, opportunity yeah. Again. It's, tried, it's a good word that you're right you're right and to be we worried. tried to do it sooner <laughs> we did try to do it we tried to have them do sooner but then some folks so needed we, so more time we can we I mean I would expect that we would be able to look at them in a couple of days but yes. you know it's bet there's, there's the timeline that did we Beth okay well then let's stay in touch that. because absolutely we need to post a selectman's meeting for Friday the August 2nd or something yeah. right we so will, that we can get in line because if, if yeah. it comes out I mean my understanding it was the minute the end we of the month them, we or the first you. week of August so if it's the first week of August we, we have to be able to be in line. Yep. Well, we won't be in line. We just have to, they, people have to, it's, six, um, it's, it's three to six months to get the permitting process done. And, and as yeah. far so as we mean, know. So it doesn't sound like we'd be in line As far as we anyways. know, Carolyn, and that's you may I'm know saying. this. That's what I'm saying. Why don't we wait for the new. so frustrated. Why don't we wait for the new administration? <laughs> you may know this better than I do, but what we've been hearing is not that the actual smart to thing will happen August in August, it's that a straw poll will a be straw released. straw proposal. Yes. Uh, right. And, but it, and the that actual that thing will be till January. So, so <sighs> the, our yeah. Yeah, I heard council that. That's seems to think it's fair to use a, uh, just a pretty good guess at what the criteria are going to be to, to do a financial comparison. Right. So. Yes. And and to go with that with reconciliation in the in the okay. whatever contracts we Cause, do because i i just i mean we're going to be ready i yes. mean that's the problem it sounds we've like been we missing. need six months yes. before we're even You're ready on it. yes that's <sighs> the right thing that's what we want to hear so so that's why we've been just chewing our nails since but january but why why since january haven't we got the permitting stuff ready yet do you because need to, because you have nothing to it, permit it costs several hundred thousand dollars Oh. And 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 we even had an Thanks offer. Thanks for that tidbit. We had an offer from one of the bidders to to go ahead with that, but they can't really go ahead if we haven't picked them. No. And uh, no, no, no. So. Um. Mm. Okay. Sounds they like they, <laughs> for what it's worth, the bidders that are under top consideration have said that they would foot the bill for that permitting. So they're putting that up front. 
but, but they have to be picked. <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I just want to make sure we do everything we can. And yeah, and we can and, post and a we meeting. Just wanted, we whatever, didn't want to come into you on the 31st first, with this me. all new. We wanted to at least get you in line of where and we're then, thinking our frustration, what's well, going on. Well, I know Dave was, the last time Dave was yeah. on the board, we were still talking about we this. We did it then. Yes. We um, did it five years before that. Yes. I mean, what, you mean he hasn't been on the board the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Well, all I'm saying, yeah, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that this just really drives me crazy, and that if if uh -huh. you need us to have a meeting, we can post in yeah. 48 hours. Yeah. We'll do we it. We can talk to we'll Beth make, and see when she thinks it's yeah. yeah. appropriate. Yeah, and just tell her that we can. We'll do. We're willing Diana, to do why whatever. Diana, why don't you check with Excellent. Beth and see what her her turn? Yeah, that's what, what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll check and with her so I we can get that ready. Right at three, we're only going to have to read three proposals this time. Okay. Well. Two. We can't say three, that yet. Three or two? Whatever. However many. We are not I mean, a number of them. Any <laughs> number, we don't know. But, well, because we don't know who's going to um, bid, right? If, we don't if really you have know. any questions, talk to us. But that's the short form for now. And okay. Thank you. The, the gist is there's a thing coming. <laughs> Thank you. But if, if you need a meeting No <laughs> wonder you guys are chewing your nails off. And we, and we want it to be as soon as possible, just like you do. So, so just... Just let us know, and yep. we'll post it, and we'll be there to do the excellent. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's perfect. I, I mean, and it's not really going to be an easy decision. No, yeah. I know. And, and so that it'll be it'll be a meeting that will revolve revolve around some. And, and I'm some guessing decisions. some considerable discussion. Okay. And, and do we have enough we'll money left to have Beth be there to advise us? Is there enough money? Um, I I don't know where we are on that, but I I don't we'll I mean. She I mean, I'm, I'm just yeah. like getting a lawyer. Beth yeah. is the most um, knowledgeable person in the whole state. So mm -hmm. we want to pay her to be here with us to help us make the right decision. Mm -hmm. So make, when, when you're thinking of getting us together, make sure that Beth is at the table too. I thought she was applying for a new MEDA grant, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but that'll take time. Yeah, well, there's only one, no, there's only one day. You can only apply in one day. It's, uh, it, whether it takes time or not, I don't know. I'm only, uh, you only have okay. one day to get it. Well, I'm they, not being sarcastic. Uh, I'm being serious. Yeah, no, I, I know. know. It's just like they fill up those blocks. I know. <laughs> I, I like understand. Yeah, but and, it's worth, and I don't think, it's, I mean, this is a multi-hundred thousand dollar decision. This is a multi-hundred dollar decision. It is worth having Beth's input. Absolutely. So. Well, the town can probably pay for her to yeah, come we only, one night. We, we may only yes, need yes. one more meeting is what we're yeah. saying. One okay. or two more meetings. Well, keep so us in the loop. See, and, and thanks for all you're doing. So I know it's nerve-wracking. Keep, keep so in mind sounds like that we it. want her with well, us. Okay. <laughs> we want to make the proper decision. We definitely need to make the end. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Clarity you. has not yeah. hit us yet. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come. It'll come. Hopefully it'll come. It's all on you. That's why we're, we're that's why we're going to pay for Beth. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, uh, just moving along, I had um, two other items, or really one other item, which was um, which was some engineering work on the landfill. Okay. So we have the um, Fuss and O'Neills, our um, engineer, who is working with Kevin to. You know, we have a depression. Yeah. We were hoping to roll all this work into this solar stuff, but we don't have the time to wait. <laughs> Don't have the time to wait. So DP, DP. And that's causing nope. us a lot of depression. Well, that seems to think that they yeah. come back to you and said, no, no, no. Yeah, huh? they, they need us to fix it. We talk, to, talk, to Be talk to Beth. Yeah, yeah um, we have. Diana, talk to Beth about that because that was supposed to also yeah, be. Yeah, it doesn't. I know. Yeah, it doesn't no, I know. I don't think we can fit the time frame. Doesn't no, fit the time Kevin frame. Is, Kevin was hoping we could roll it into some of the Somebody solar. Somebody that they could ask. Or a postponement. Uh, they have already. Well, under the understanding? Yeah. Because she yeah. thought they could. I don't know. What's that? Well, the, some of the, the bidders included. Included. I know. That, that gotcha. Okay. And we don't have the time the to wait. Well, the problem, okay. the problem is, is that that's included in some She of the, thought they could. Is it a consent they, decree? Or? They, need, they need to build something in some way that includes. I mean, in other words, it may have to be all done. Yes, it may. And that's, that, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. DP, DP. DP. Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. 
Don't so worry. anyways, um, so it is to build the road out to fix the depression and, and, um, and to monitor because DEP is requiring um, the engineers to be on site to fix the, the depression, to get the settling, you know, the pooling of water off the landfill. So then, then there's an also a second contract, same engineering firm, to do the test well, test pit well, uh, monitoring. you know, monitoring. Okay. Um, we had another company last year. It was quite a bit more money. This company is quite a bit less money. Um, the other company kind of left us high and dry, and so, do, so we're working with Fuss and the So I've got from the other company. So yes. Yeah, so what you have in your hand is. Um, We've been going back and forth with our lawyers and their lawyers on the terms and conditions, um, you know, the, of the contract. So we have got that settled and square now. Both our lawyer and their lawyer are good. So we're, we would use that same, you know, terms and conditions of the contract on both contracts. Um, so one you have before you is, um, just find it here, is for the roadway and the construction oversight, which is 12,620. They've got it broken out um, for 6716 for the roadway design. Um, and then the construction oversight is 5,904. Um, so that we would need to approve. He's late on getting that going. Um, and then the second, uh, the second item is the test well monitoring contract. And that is, um, Let's see, let me do my math here. I think it's 27, but let me just add this up. We had budgeted like, I think 50 or 60? It's 27.5. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Or at least I think it is. One, yeah. nine, one, oh, oh. One, 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 six, plus one, four. Yes, 27.5. So, I don't, um, I take a, a motion to move this forward in, in a second, and then we can discuss it. Um, I make a motion. Do I have a second on just uh, on just the we'll do the street the uh, road one first. Oh, okay. So that's twelve thousand. Twelve thousand six twenty. Okay. And we have a second. I'll second. And then um, discussion on this. Um, can Kev, so that, that 12,000, that's, um, Kevin is going to be able to do some he, of that with Town Highway? Yes, I think he has this figured already, okay. and he has the other one figured already. Okay. Yep. Right. He's just been waiting for all the contract stuff to get done. All right. So we can move forward on it. So, um, I guess all those in favor? Aye. 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 And now to move on to the test well monitoring, which is quite a bit less than our last company. Yeah, 27.5 um, is a lot less than me. Um, I think it's, well, it's not quite half, but it's mm -hmm. almost half of what um, we had appropriated. So the, the money isn't the issue. It's, I just, the prices have been just jumped all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, it makes me wonder. Well, what, what was we it actually, many years ago with Weston and Sampson? Do you remember? I mean, there were other wells too. It was under 20. And then we went to two other firms, and it jumped up into the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And now we're back down to 27.5. And this is a, let me just verify, so this I, is I, a one year, right? Yeah. I always wonder what, you know, the quality of the reporting is. Well, but or, you know. It's not, our, it's not our problem, I guess. No, but it needs, you know, DEP is requiring it. Um, yeah. This is the... The best deal we have at the moment. Oh no, I, I, it, it's not. It's definitely underpriced mm -hmm. from what we had estimated from our previous engineering firm. But it just. I know it'd be nice to have. You know, like I, you said, I don't understand how it, the price is very. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a hundred percent difference in price mm -hmm. from one one engineering firm to another. So, wh how do you just? I mean, what's the justification of it? I don't know what happened to the other firm. They just well, I know they left. went bankrupt, but yeah. they certainly were collecting off of us. So I, I mean, I don't know. But so, so the one before that was in the forties. Mm -hmm. So now we're back to twenty-seven five. But it's not our problem, I guess, as long as DEP is satisfied. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion to approve the Fuss O'Neill. Um, 
fussing in a Neil Price of 27.5. Do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Any further discussion? Can we can we monitor that they are sending it in or, or ask that they give us a report? Because that was the problem mm -hmm. with Lamp you know CC us in on the report. Because that was a report with the problem with the other engineering company that we didn't even know that they didn't do the work. Yep, this has got a reporting uh, mechanism in the contract. Um, that port, anybody? The, so when they do when they do the sampling, that we get the sampling, we get notified that they did the sampling. Mm -hmm. Not like, oh yeah, we filed it. Thus, and will support the, uh, they will submit the report by December 31st, 2019 to the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection and provide one copy of the town for its records. So, yes. I, I, meant, I meant like when they're out there actually sampling the water. Well, and I mean, they, they, they got to do the report, right? You mean just tell us that they're doing it? Yeah, just let us know. Well, I'm sure Kevin could keep an eye on that, see yeah. when they're going out to do it, because they're doing the landfill monitoring. Yeah. Monitoring will, will uh, be conducted before November 1st, 2019, along with task one. The reason why is because landfill there are environmental, I mean, the, if, 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 it's, if we've had a lot of rain, your soil is super saturated, you have a lot of runoff. So you, if you're, if you, if you, if it's really dry, everything is and sunny, your chemicals that are supposed to be off, you know, off site, are exposed to sunlight and it's dry, so they're they're not around. Well, so I, they've got I, it I before know, November. It yeah, has but, to be done before November and, right, it, and but, provide. And so uh, there's there's many there's there's the well monitoring there's the gas monitoring. Well, what I want is the when they're the doing the well, well sampling. The water. Yes, the water sampling. I would mm -hmm. like to know when they're doing the water sampling when they do it. I so think they're we three weeks make, late at the moment. Right, but so that we can determine what the conditions are. Mm -hmm. Because if if they if they did it yesterday or today before the rain came, it's been extremely dry. And there's been really sunny out. So the the well, what they're looking for is not going to be very high. But if it's a lot of rain and it's a lot of clouds, stuff like that, and then they, you know, for weeks on end, like last year, that makes a huge difference in the sampling. Well, we'll have a sampling each year, right? I mean, we can, I can't really dictate when they're going to sample. No, 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 but it, we, I want to know. What's what? that? No, no, this Kevin, isn't. There's, this Kevin is private. Well, these are the private well samples. Well, there's some. There's both private and and uh, but private. Private and ours. Some of the wells use surface water, and some some are deep down. Good. And the conditions, of the weather conditions, and stuff like that do impact some of the sampling. So what I wanted, which we haven't had for years, is. Some you know notification that they took the sample on such and such day, so we can say, oh, it's been really right. It's been really dry, and this is what's coming up. We we have some way to defend ourselves if DEP comes back with something, because we you know in the past we've had problems with this, and what we've done is had to go out and backtrack and you know try to figure out and, and demand that they and and go out and get another second independent sampling to show that that condition was because you it, potentially there's thousands and thousands of dollars we're on the hook for so if they tell us when they're sampling you know um, it, it makes a huge difference mm -hmm. one of the samples was taken not too long after Irene and that you know that was totally not accurate because there was so much stuff had come down and it had contaminated. There was contaminated water everywhere. The fields were terrible. So, you know. There were the wells that are testing the shallow wells and artesian stuff. Okay. So it, it makes, does make some difference. I've been notified that all that's been negotiated and it's going to be um, reported. Oh, it's Kevin. Yeah. Okay. So you're on all board. Right. You're good. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. All right. So we have a, a second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 
And I'll sign those. Let's see, you have copies. Do you have, a, I don't know if you have any copies of those. I, have the, I think yeah, you had. Um, I might have the original yeah, here. I prepared. Yep, I do. And those. I just wrote it on. So, so. Sorry. Yeah. And then I'll sign these. Okay. Um, so I'll get to that too. Uh, is there a uh, town ministry's report? Do you want to hit anything? Oh or we gosh, pretty I much think, hit most yeah, of it, right? pretty much hit everything. Okay. Any public comment? No? Thank you for coming. Um, so I guess our next meeting we know will be uh, uh, July 31st, 2019. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I am still working on probably will be into October then a you know a um, informational night. I'd love to have a couple of them to just kind of keep hammering this sewer stuff and where we're at, where we're going, make sure everybody has correct um, you mean accurate you're, you're information. Into August, not what did I say? October. <laughs> I'm I'm losing it. I'm, it's late. <laughs> I know. Long day. No, no, no. That's fine. I keep saying so, different months. But. Um, so um, because we're not going to meet again till the 31st. Do you want to pick a couple nights that we can start saying that we're going to be having informational nights in August? Because um, we should pick nights mm -hmm. that Dave is got not working. Yep. And um, we can or not do okay. Wednesday okay. nights. That's fine, That's okay. too. Yep. Actually, it's supposed to the board in the office. So. Okay. Um, I was planning to be out of town the 5th through the 9th, but... Okay. It's not set in stone yet. Um, and then our vote is on the 9th of September. That's, you know, so we've got to be in the month of August. So well, then let's we back could up. do like a 15th and, and the 29th or something like that. What do we have the 29th? Um, well, I don't, I don't, I think the, the weekend before Labor Day is useless. Which day is that? That's the 29th. The 29th. Okay. That's useless. People are... Focus on Labor Day and. Uh, um, so, do you want to do the week before, like yes. the Tuesday the third? Uh, no, 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 or no. The fifth. No, I'm talking about. We're still in August, okay? So we need to go because Labor Day. You're saying the 29th of August. That's Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then our vote is the 9th of September. Right. I would think so we would need something like the week before, so people are fresh in their mind. Good information well, in September, okay. and then we do another one sometime in August. Well, I was looking at the week of the nineteenth. I think I think mm -hmm. we have, I think people haven't checked out for Labor Day yet. They haven't. Mm -hmm. They're fine. There still could be around, because school is potentially school. Doesn't school start that last week? A couple of days. Two. Twenty eighth or twenty ninth, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, it does. Yep. So. Maybe if we pick the week of the 19th and then, and then the week of the third. And then we back up and see if you have some information you could if you're going to be out of town the first week, maybe then we could do some some information on the 14th at our select board meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we could do like a semi little one. We could do a full blown one the week of the 19th. And then um you have Labor Day which is Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be tough, but so then the fifth. So maybe I would say we could try to do something the fifth. A sem a small. Mm -hmm. Let's answer I all the questions. I just think it needs to be a little bit before the the vote, so people right. really try to you know can get all their last minute questions. Well, we can out. keep asking. We can keep outreaching to people and say, look, what do you not understand yet? How can we how can we translate this information to you? How can we make sure you don't have misinformation? So if we if we do the fifth, David, do you know if you're working the fifth? Of what September? September. Thursday. Let's see. Fourteen. Eighth. Uh, yeah, I am working the fifth. Okay, so if we if we started, I'm with off. The, You're off. the third. Well, how about the third? Oh, that's Tuesday right after Labor Day. Okay, then. Um, do you think? Uh, do you think people would come? I don't think so. Well, I think what about the fourth then? That Wednesday. But you you're working the oh, fourth. Oh, you're working the fourth. No, you're working the fifth. 
Yeah, but I worked fourth and fifth. Oh, oh, I thought it was every other day. Okay, gotcha. No, it's... Yep. So what time schedules. do you go to work, Dave? 6.30? Uh, I'm supposed to be to work around 5.30, actually. Oh, oh okay. But my crew doesn't start until 7. Well, so. you know what? Um, okay, let's, let's still... Trevor, you and I can do the fifth. Because I still think that's the best date. Okay, so let's do that. And then, Dave, on the week of um, the See, 19th that's, yeah, that's of August, now. what days do you have off on the 19th, that week of, of August 19th? I'm off the 19th. So you're on Monday the 19th? Well, let's, well then Monday, let's... Oops. Yeah. Monday and Tuesday I'm off. Okay. The 19th and 20th. Well, let's do the 20th, because I think... Monday's not really a good choice. I think people are not like focused. Whatever works, yep. Okay, so, so let's pick the 20th as another day. Mm -hmm. We'll do a big bang out. So one of the things you could, you talked about doing an open house. Mm -hmm. Do you want to, so I'm thinking for your, for some of your public information session, I think you should do, you've talked about putting together some type of video. I think yep. you should have a I video. Have you could start out with a video. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, the financial data and information, yep. I think we should drill down on, on, especially what the debt exclusion to the taxpayers yep. is going to be, because I think that's it's been very confusing. Yep. Right, because you're only talking out of $19 million, you're talking just about $5 million, mm -hmm. a little under $5 million, depending. I think you know, using so the example we need how to, the town voted for the debt exclusion of $3 million for the school roof, and it ended up costing one point eight. So people can understand that they went and, you know, there was an appropriation to go ahead for the three million, mm -hmm. but in fact, it came out to be 1.8, so. Right. But I think it would be good to drill down on what, if, Actual when, users, a, when yep. a debt exclusion kicks in for about the five million mm -hmm. at some point, what are we talking about on the average taxpayer? Yep. Yep. Like on there, on two, on, there. right, yep. at the 25%. Because I think that's what, you know, this idea of the 19 million in the debt exclusion, the amount right. that we're actually debt excluding is a fraction. Correct. Because you know, you've got a, all the other. Right. Yeah. It's just a portion of that amount. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to be clear on that. And too. it's over a multi-year program. Right, exactly. So, so it's I think not we just should, all at once. Right. And, and we need I don't to get think that people, information out. people did not understand that. Correct. No, we didn't. We weren't clear on it. I think we, we yeah. took it. I think we, um, because we had good support at town meeting and we've talked so much about it, we do generally have support. Um, but there was an active campaign against the debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. So now we realize we need to educate people. So the people what that, that voted no, that had concerns about the debt exclusion and understanding what that meant, not so much the project, Right. I think we need to get clarity mm -hmm. on that. Yep. So. And then I would suggest one of those times you have an open house over at the place. Like you yep. said, one of those dates that you yep. said, like 5.30, like maybe date one, yep. an earlier night from like, right. say, 5 to to six or you know it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a huge thing but just let people come in tour talk to keith yep. tour the facility um, understand what we're maybe looking to do. that you could do something yeah, like I that i think that would be helpful i don't think it's a good place to have snack i was gonna no, say no snacks snack. i know no no maybe no not snack. snacks we can come but, back to the town hall for <laughs> snacks yeah no refreshments but i think just a tour i think you know that doesn't have to be a huge thing but give them an opportunity to talk directly to the operator and yeah. to see with their own eyes and then also with the video at the at mm -hmm. the public hearing a public meeting we have here yep. i think we should open with that video and yep. and let that you know, let folks see that well, too. I don't, How that works, I don't yeah. think people understand that it's broken. Stuff is right. broken. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think that if they visibly saw it with their eyes, like even when I went there and mm -hmm. saw what really they're dealing with, what it, what the challenges are, you don't really understand. You no. know, until you really see and, you see with and your have eyes. it but, kind it, of explained. But that's no different than touring this. When we went to Sunderland plant, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't understand why. Why didn't they have the problems we did? You know, why they have that little like, oh. grinder and you pull out this little bucket? But One now you five, realize. Five gallon bucket totally of stuff. Different. And it's the reason why is because it's a pump system and they have mm -hmm. grinders at every pump station. Right, right, so right, it's right. already coming right. down, right. already ground up. Right. I think the other thing that I, I find really notable that I've heard said many, many times in discussions that we haven't really talked about is, is sort of the operation of the system too. Like a lot of the things that Kip's talking about require a totally different attending to the system of our staff and manpower. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on what your operations levels are. That's what we heard. Like mm -hmm. Sunderland has a different 
different system where somebody actually physically has to go out and do something to that system periodically, mm -hmm. I believe. So, yeah. so it's Is not that still contract there, so like. Yes. Warner Brothers. Warner yeah. Brothers. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's, it's down, also very different in how. Yeah. And he yeah. Just, he literally shovels it out. Right. But, but that's all there is. It's yeah. not like these big truckloads of stuff. Right, right. But that's but it is a, that's it a is difference a, between a, a pressurized pump system and a gravitate. Ours is gravitational. There's no pumps. Right. There's no, well, Captain Lake. Just but there's no one. grinder at hmm. Captain Lake. Mm -hmm. We yeah. should have put a grinder in at Captain Lake. put in there for four houses. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but I think the other thing that's really notable about what you said, and we should continue to to um, discuss or, or just uh, make people aware of, is that things are constantly changing. Technology is rapidly changing. Like you've talked about the the climate resiliency pieces. Mm -hmm. All of these things are changing, like almost uh, daily. Mm -hmm. So by the time we are you know, designing this project, implementing this project, there could be new methodologies that come up. So, I mean, I think you're gonna, you know, that, yeah. that's always gonna, gonna to be an option keep evaluating. to keep mm -hmm. evaluating. I think that and at we, the last meeting, that's came up. We have to break it up so that up. we can pull some of the stuff out, like the resiliency stuff, we can get mm -hmm. it funded by somebody else. Right. right. You know, well, let's get a grant for that. Right. Let's get a grant for, you know, putting solar or whatever down there, a, alternative energy. Didn't you we don't, do that in Old Deerfield? Yeah, well, that was a disaster. <laughs> it's got some work to do there, I guess. Yeah, don't no, um, not say well, what our past experience has been. Oh, my God. Okay. I still don't so, understand that. So, okay, all right. so tentatively then you just scheduled for... The 31st. August, uh, January, July 31st. Is a regular selectman's meeting Correct. at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Then we have a regular selectman's meeting on the 14th of August mm -hmm. um, at 6 o'clock. On the 28th. And but we're going to do on the agenda for the 14th is going to be a little bit of, you know, time set aside mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. um, informational night. Then we're on the August 20th. What I mean, I don't know. What do you want to do six o'clock again? I don't care what time it is. That's our night informational yeah. night. That's fine. Five or six, something like that. Five thirty maybe. Put the bird. I don't know. If Let's we're going to have people down, you want some light? You what know, it wants to be want? light out. Is that the, what, do you want to do an open house? Is that the night? I'm going to figure that out in the meantime. Okay, yeah. But right. I think, you okay. know, I want to talk to David. Well, let's and have the okay. meeting part be here at 6 o'clock. And then if we're going to do the open house, let's have it down there. Uh, I'd like to reverse that because I'm worried that we won't have light. I don't know what, right. you know, if it's going to be. Do you it's think it'll still be dark. light then? Or what no. do you think? I don't know. Well, no, no, you know, no, I'm talking after about our short discussions at. Uh, oh, 4.30. Oh. 4.30 to 6 mm -hmm. is the open house. And then we come here. Oh, then here. we come here. Yes, I have, we had it reversed. Okay, yeah, yeah I was missing. So that way you're yeah. picking up. I mean, you're going to have it a little bit of a time so that people have some option. Yeah, to coming. come and not come. Yeah. So potentially, I'm, I'm not locked We're, into no, it. No, of course. Let's say 4.30 to 6, open house. And we come back here come for back here informational. And meeting. Yep. Okay. And then we have another tentative for September 5th. Yep. Uh, but we do also have a select board meeting on August 28th. Is that yep. right? Yes. Right. 6 o'clock. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Motion to adjourn. I make that motion. All those Second in favor? Aye. 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 We're out.